At least I can see it transitioning. <laughs> Jake's just going to hit the button to turn everything on without <laughs> us ever knowing it. I did it a few seconds ago, yeah. God, oh, God. darn it, Jake. <laughs> With that being said, go welcome. fuck yourself, everyone. God, Flarek, you can't do that. <laughs> can't, we're live. You can't do that. We are live. God. No, it's okay. Just edit this out like we always do. No, we can't do that. <laughs> All right. Huh? Well, welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. This is Ryan. This is Flarek. This is Jake. And this is Mac. And this is is our Grand Sumo Breakdown 100 patron live stream celebration. Thank you to everybody that has already joined us. Give all of our patrons of that have joined Seriously. us in the chat. Seriously. And if you're a patron and you're not able to join us live, completely understandable. Uh, but thank you so much for supporting this podcast. Uh, we'll dive into it a little bit later with one of our questions that we've been asked. But never expected that <laughs> this sumo wrestling podcast made by four guys in the middle of Iowa uh half a world away from where the sport is really uh contested would reach a hundred patrons it's absolutely wild thank you so much for getting us to this point and as a reward for all of you uh you just get to listen to us talk some more I mean it's you get more of what, oh, what yeah. you get. yeah <laughs> As a you reward get... for all of you. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we've been accumulating what is now officially called blood questions uh, because as part of signing up for our Patreon, you can ask us a question, and we are oath-bound, honor-bound, blood-bound, if you will, to answer those questions. And so we've accumulated quite a few over the amount of time we have not been answering those questions. So we're <laughs> yeah, we've looking... We've been doing a poor job of getting those <laughs> Yeah, we own. have. And seriously, <laughs> do you people really want my blood? I mean, it was decided that <laughs> my blood is the one that's going in these vials here. That do you especially your blood. Off the rails, didn't it? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what you're, what we're gonna expect. So yeah, let's <laughs> go ahead and get started with some of our questions. I don't want to start with the first question that we have in our outline. Are just we already be- whinging? <laughs> <laughs> I. I don't know what that means. So, yes, what, what, bailing, in a good way. As in finding excuses to not do it? <laughs> well, no, it's it's because I don't want to go so deep into heavy number-based research right off the top oh, of this. that's right. That's the one that you did research for. Yeah, maybe we'll okay. get on that one. Okay, okay. I was I, about to say, I, God, right, I don't want to give my blood so soon. <laughs> I think we have the perfect question to start us off, and that came from Baker ED. He asked us, I would like to know more about how the GSB crew came to be so into sumo together. How did the stars align? <laughs> In other words, for me to convince one buddy to be into sumo, which is pretty niche, at least as much <laughs> as Baker PD is, would be a massive achievement. But for the four of you at the same time to have the same level of passion, enough for you all to invest the time to make a top podcast is exceptional to my mind. <laughs> would love to hear as much as you're comfortable to share about how it came about and what connects you. The the flattery uh, is what really moved this one to the top of the list. Oh, completely. Absolutely, yeah. completely. <laughs> People know how to get me to talk about them. Say nice things about me first. <laughs> Ryan, you're the greatest. Can I have some money? Can I now give me money? Oh. <laughs> Maybe. You're so, you're so kind oh. and generous, Ryan. Oh. I, I'm very conflicted, but... Maybe. But maybe. <laughs> um, I'll start this one out because I get to claim credit for being the, the very, very first spark of it. Not not the whole thing, but the very initiate, in, initial part of it was um, uh, there's this, there's this uh, website. I actually looked them up recently, and they're not there anymore. Real, real quick, Jake, it is being reported. You're super quiet. Oh, okay. Um, I will. Speak into I the know. microphone. I'll just yeah. eat the microphone and see how that there goes. There you go. That's the um, one. <laughs> No, I'll turn it up a little bit here. But um, the there used to be a website called 538 that uh, they were big on, like, political predictions and stuff like that oh, yeah. based on polling. Uh, I looked them up recently. They're not really there anymore. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't really care. I think Nate Silver sold it at some point yeah. for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. They'd kind of drifted off of my radar for a, for a number of years. But either way, um, yeah, they had an article. Uh, they, they started with political stuff, but they also did, like, sports statistics articles. And they did a really cool one where they compared Hakuho to Raiden, 
uh, Raiden being the um, like the previously regarded greatest of all time wrestler. And because Sumo has so much statistics written down, you can kind of compare somebody right now to somebody from like 250 years ago. So they did this project where they were like, oh, yeah, well, this guy had this winning percentage and whatever and, and things like that. And it was just a really cool article. Um, and I looked it up. And at that time, uh, there had been much uh, 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 far fewer crackdowns on YouTube. So there was just sumo <laughs> in the before left, right, times. Center. In the before times, yes. <laughs> you, you couldn't you couldn't shake a stick at YouTube without hitting five different sumo channels that just like rebroadcast the NHK stuff. Um, and it was glorious. Yeah. So we started watching it from there. Um, the four of us uh, met. Well, Ryan and Flarek met each other in high school, and then the rest of us we kind of ganged up in college. Mm-hmm. So we've been just nerdy friends for what probably five years or so by that point. Anyways. Oh yeah. Around uh, 2016 ish. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, five to six years. Yeah, um, and yeah, I, I honestly, I don't, I guess, I don't have any tips for how, uh, how to get other people hooked on sumo, <laughs> because I have yet to get anybody else hooked on sumo as thoroughly as the four of us just got hooked at the same time. <laughs> I, I, I it just happened. <laughs> yeah, I think it just worked out because we have been friends for so long that. Jake got interested. And it's like, hey, check this out, and we we're just like, all right, yeah, this is kind of cool, and then we just. For some reason, kept up with it, and then Jake was like, "Hey, let's start a podcast." And we're like, "Oh well, yeah, that that shouldn't take yeah. up much time. Let's was do that." that. My idea too. I, I, well, I was, think it yeah, was. We were, we were trying to find more. Did oh hi, Katie. Katie's in the background. Um, we were we were trying to find more English content. That was just it. We were finding more rebroadcasts, and we had more questions on the rules, and we kept having to look everything up on various other sources. We're like, we wanted more English content, and we had been watching long enough. We thought. Why don't we start putting this out there? Why don't we start putting our interpretation of this out there? And then I don't know who suggested the podcast idea, but we all just kind of looked at each other and were like, nah, nah. Well, yeah. maybe. <laughs> Hang on here. Wait a sec. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was uh, it was our – just kind of I said, wait a second. As like white males, I think it is our right to be able to – Nay, 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 nay. Our duty. Ooh. Yes, <laughs> Ooh. you're right. To not only just like put our opinion out there to each other and everyone else in our kind of close vicinity, but out into the world and to let everyone just and start a podcast. And once I knew that, I just knew deep in my, my bones that this was the right thing to do. Thus, in Jake's basement, around the table with the projector screen going on the wall, the GSB podcast was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think Flarek, I think the meme you're going for was like white guys when you turn thirty have to get either like really into golf, uh, mm. be- uh, <laughs> brewing beer, or start a podcast. I think we're the three. Like you, yeah, when you hit three. when you hit thirty, you just got to do one of those. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we we picked off of the list. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but I think I was pretty I much. Think... Yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> my yeah. my main memory of why we started doing this is Jake's like. I'm trying to find a podcast to listen to about sumo. I can't find one. Let's make one. Let's make one. <laughs> We're like, wait, what? You want to make one? I'm like, oh, okay, we and can. <laughs> me and Flarek have been in, uh, in and out of like bands and other like audio projects over the years enough that we like. I'm pretty sure we didn't buy anything. We just like searched my closet and Flarek's closet and dug out enough crap that we could just start. Yeah, kind of awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely that's where we got their early mixer, the couple mm-hmm. mics, XLR cables. Uh, yeah, just we just had it lying around, which so, is probably the big thing that helped out with actually getting this started. Because mm-hmm. yeah. we had actually pretty okay audio from the very beginning, which is the one thing we had going. Right. Yeah, we just had enough decent mics just kind of laying around. But yeah, so I guess uh, as far as the uh, the answer to the actual question goes, though. This is like asking a lottery winner, like, how do you make money? It's like, well, you buy lottery tickets. You just yeah. just start a podcast with your friends, right? Like, yeah. I, I don't have any good tips, but, like, <laughs> good luck, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We had a question it's... in the chat. So then Sumo Kaboom also came around. Just, I guess you guys were the originals. Yeah, Sumo Kaboom popped up three, four years ago. Um, I know Sumo Mayanichi around the same time. Maybe they're five or six yeah. years old at this point. There, there uh, are definitely Sumo Punks a few that popped attempts up. at podcasts before. No, I, I guess not attempts, but not like attempts. podcasts that started and didn't necessarily um, do it do it as regularly as we did or as long yeah. as we did. Like I think Tachi I was putting out podcasts somewhat regularly around that time, but mm-hmm. um, 
but yeah, there there weren't there there wasn't really uh, uh, nearly as well developed of a sumo community that we knew of, uh, other than like r slash sumo on Reddit had like a few hundred people there. The yeah. sumo forums go back way way back. Um, but yeah, like there's a lot of uh, uh, around that time. We we were far from the only ones who were like getting into sumo around that time, and that's when a lot of stuff kind of blew up. Uh, podcasts started showing up. Uh, lots more demand for online videos and stuff like that, which inevitably led to the situation we're in now where they're all getting taken down. Yeah. but We got another question uh, pertaining to you, Jake, and Flarek. Hold up. Bands? Did you guys play in them or just did mixing? <laughs> I, I think played we both trumpet. Played them, right? I yeah. was uh, first chair, <laughs> first trumpet in high school band. Uh, Ryan, the question was not to you. The <laughs> question was to Jake and Flarek. Uh, well, you technically have... play in bands. That's yeah, how that's we met. Yeah. <laughs> Hakuho, is, uh, Hakuho is on the top of my bass guitar back there. I, I haven't played in anything organized since high school, and it was just like a garage band that didn't do anything. We were just kind of like a cover band that was just lazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I know my way in, around, uh, you know, an audio mixer well enough that we kind of, and, and say, same for Flarek. Are you kind of a similar, similar boat as far as experience goes? Uh, maybe a little bit more cause it was kind of during the college time, but it was definitely kind of just, it was, uh, we definitely weren't kind of trying to really hit it hard. We tried to do some originals, but a lot of covers as, as well. And it just, yeah, it was mostly just kind of hanging out with friends and having a good time. Yeah. So well, I guess the the answer to what you're actually asking, no, there is not old embarrassing video online anywhere <laughs> or, or original songs you can listen to. No, not really. Uh, what were the names of your guys' bands? We were Electric Love. That's we played awesome. a lot of like, oh classic God. and psychedelic rock and stuff like that, and it was like just – Good music to vibe out to. Yes. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> well, yeah, because we, uh, we practiced like a handful of times, and we did like uh... – oh, crap. What was that other one called? There was another band that I was in, but I can't remember what they were called because we didn't ever do any shows. We just practiced for a few years. Psychedelic Passion? No. <laughs> oh, okay. No, 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 I just threw a name out. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah, because you were just going to guess it out of nowhere when I can't even well, remember. Well, why not? <laughs> No, what what about you, Flarek? What was your uh, what band did you play yeah. in? Our our band was uh, it was kind of when I learned that stuff done by committee is not always the best. <laughs> uh, we kind of like had a bunch of like little ideas and words everyone kind of put forth, and then at the end of it, we came up with the nonsense word of Adagera or Adasera or something like that, and it was just uh, like I think everyone was like not offended by it, but no one was kind of blown away by it. But, yeah. Sure. Well, isn't that really what you want? Nobody was offended, but nobody was blown away. You're you're, you're middling. That, that's okay. Yeah, I guess it's probably what we were <laughs> going for. But that's how we decided it, on the name of the Sumo away. Breakdown. Was we all just picked <laughs> our favorite words and then we drew yeah, them out yeah, of the like, hat. Yeah. We got yeah. really, really lucky. We drew them yes, in the we order did. we did. Guys, <laughs> I love Breakdown. Let's put it in there somewhere. This... I swear. Well, no, Breakdown, it, it... Grand Sumo. <laughs> yeah. If I remember correctly, my favorite word was break and Max's favorite word was down. And so we had a big fight trying to figure out how to get those together. We didn't necessarily want to combine them because it's three words, not four words. But, you know, it, it worked out. In the it end. worked out. There was a fifth guy that was going to join, but the name, it just didn't work out with the name. Yeah. Once, once we had Grand Sumo Breakdown, we couldn't find a way to fit that fifth word in there. Yeah. Diabetes. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Tachi Eyes podcast didn't get Chio Chio and Chio Law Firm ad Oh, money. I love that commercial. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, those Thanks, commercials. Ian. That, uh, That's I'm a callback. I'm glad back. we stopped doing it because that always, like, stressed It was a out. lot of work. Yeah, and we was, did it all but, at, like, yeah. the last second every single time. <laughs> That's not to say commercials won't be coming back in some form. Uh, but, yeah, like, the every Basho new commercial thing that – Oh, that unsustainable yeah. unsustainable yeah. <laughs> we we had a few years where we had enough like parody ideas that we could do it uh but it just yeah quickly became unsustainable and too much work like our our work lives were growing our family lives were growing yeah. and there's only so much time you can put into a 30 second commercial riffing off of billy mays can i can i have one more <laughs> point before we move on to another question here um for the first three years uh, maybe like two and a half years, whatever. Uh, from from 2017 or so when we started until the pandemic, we recorded every single episode in person. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> what? How did we do that? I don't know. We <laughs> didn't have kids. Yeah, we didn't have oh, that's kids. Also, that's true. No kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, Mac drove down from Ames every time we had to record. Yep. And oh, which for context... <laughs> Which, for context, is a 40-minute 40 40 minute drive one right. way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'd lug the, like, 20, 30-pound mixer off the top shelf of the closet and plug in mm. these, like, hundreds of feet of cord total. Yeah. What were we doing? We were we were not – we, we, we did time. not optimize the podcast meta at that point. No. Uh, just, <laughs> just get Zoom. <laughs> this is so much better. It's so much better. I don't better. understand really what we were doing. This is so much better. And then, like, after, after the uh, pandemic – not stopped, but like cooled down a little bit so that we were comfortable all being in the same room together. Like we'd try like one podcast, a Basho to get back together. And then we quickly like, why? There's no point. We could do <laughs> just as schedules. good in our own <laughs> homes, not having to travel. Yeah. The, the only person that that was okay for was Jake because mm-hmm. we did it house. at his house. <laughs> <laughs> in this exact room for about half of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Move from Jake's basement to Jake's office to our own offices. Our own offices. <laughs> All right. I chose the first question. Mac, why don't you choose the next blood question to answer? All right. The next blood question, at least the one that caught my eye, was from Martha M. What would we choose for our sumo ring names? I thought that was really fun. <laughs> I I see Ryan's answer on here, and immediately I'm like, you, you, you got to get more than one idea here, man. No, <laughs> going all the way back to when we did a brief D and D spat. You, uh... <laughs> I remember. I will, that. <laughs> I will have you know. So my name that I have chosen is uh, Kumo no Sa- Kuma no Sato. Uh, so <laughs> what it translates to is Bear Village, uh, <laughs> and in the uh, like the short lived sumo D and D episodes that we did my Richie's name was Kuma no Yama and so I've always I mean mountain of bears mountain yeah, of bears mountain bear, bear mountain uh so a lot of Richie have like animals in their Shikona and I like that and bears have always been my favorite animal so I knew I've always known if I were to have a Shikona I would want Kuma in there but then like the no Yama was just I like Yama I like how that sounds but I was I was thinking on this question specifically like well it really matters on which stable I go into, doesn't it, on how my <laughs> name would be because there's a lot of different naming convent. Most stables have their own naming convention. And so I was thinking, if I'm joining Sumo, I'm clearly going to be a very highly uh, successful amateur Rikshi that's going to be sought after by all the top stables, so I'm going to have my pick of the litter. And if I were to choose <laughs> any stable... Four months ago, it would have been Miyagino Beya. Now? <laughs> now? Where are you going now? Like, Isegahama? <laughs> no, I'm thinking Nisho no Seki, because we know Kisei no Sato is oh. kind of at the forefront of having, kind of like redesigning like the training room. We know they're using like a lot of cameras. We've seen some article where they have like x-rays of the rickshi <laughs> and what's going on when they're practicing, and they just seem to like have like the most – yeah. Yeah, okay. the, I was gonna say, wait, most... like legitimate X-rays as they're going. I'm like, oh, the radiation levels. I oh, don't God. Think so. <laughs> okay, no, probably not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think just with like how at the forefront of change, it seems like the former Kisei Nosato, current Nisho Noseki Oyakata is. That would be the stable I would want to belong to. And we know Ono Sato, uh, he has taken on like Kisei Nosato's Sato. Uh, so I would take that on. And we know they're okay with bears. And Nisho no Seki Beya, because they have Shido Kuma, White Bear, in their Beya now. So, yeah, Kuma no Sato. Uh, we do have a comment in the chat. Uh, Brandon, our, our <laughs> Iowa Sumo that. teammate, <laughs> now that he knows that Mac lives up closer to him, he's he said he's legally obligated uh, to say, fight me, Mac. Uh, <laughs> Mac, the guy who has yet to show up to an Iowa Sumo practice. and When you have us, them 45 minutes one way. <laughs> we give you plenty of notice every time. Yeah, I don't do think that. it's the drive, Mac. I don't think it's the drive. <laughs> no, no, it's the right, drive. Um, oh, trust me. It's the drive. <laughs> uh, so mine I've had in my head for quite a while, um, and it is Kitanobi, Fire of the North, which is way cooler than I deserve. But, like, I'm from Minnesota, and the rest of us are in Iowa. So, like, I don't know. I guess that's – I'm from the North, right? Mm. No, oh, I yeah. thought it was going to be, like, a Fist of the North Star reference. 
That's what I was expecting. Yeah, I feel like that would be too on the nose just because I like an anime to just pick a, a Shikona after it. But, I mean, that's as good a reason as any, I guess. <laughs> All right, what about uh, Flerick or Mac? What do you got? Uh, I chose Genki Kawa, which translates to Energetic River. <laughs> I think I that sums it. up me perfectly. Yeah, yeah you <laughs> are you definitely like water, a moving right? body of water, yes. I am indeed, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> We're just bags of water moving around. Bags of water moving around. <laughs> Energetic. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't translate as well. So we just went with the river, right? You know, river. <laughs> yeah. And Genki yeah. meaning like energy or or uh, vitality, right? Yep, vitality, essentially. I, I also love on the chat, I'm being called out and just ripped down here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like I, I'm seeing, I'm watching these come across the screen. I'm like, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> yep yep yeah because brandon lives near you but he does drive further than you <laughs> oh i didn't realize that <laughs> uh, i i apologize carla joe if we had started this 10 minutes sooner you would have gotten all the close-ups of me eating that you could possibly want <laughs> <laughs> it was gross he he zoomed his camera yep. in and everything <laughs> chewed with my mouth open it's awful you don't you don't want to see that you're lucky i got it all down before we started <laughs> <laughs> what do you got flair all right all right, for me, I'm going to go with uh, just a D&D name that I had, uh, that one we actually did a couple sessions way back, of uh, Goniku, uh, where it oh. uh, translates to strong meat. Yes, so. you remember strong meat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Your God. character was like the, uh, the, the stereotypical uh, spherical sumo wrestler. You were the, you were the big man. The, right? yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Strong meat. Just like how Mac is a moving uh, bag of water. I'm a moving a bag of water. <laughs> I'm just some. I'm just strong meat. That's all. <laughs> the what, since we're talking about our old D and D thing that lasted for like three episodes. Um, yes. I only thing I remember from that is if you listen to me on the Bonds K episodes, you know that I'm always second and triple guessing myself on every single decision. And the way <gasps> that the combat worked was basically like rock, paper, scissors. It was a complicated Just, rock, paper, scissors. You got to like yeah. pick, yeah, pick the thing that counters the other guy kind of deal. Yeah. And so I just remember like one match going up against Flarick and I'm just like, agonizing over all these decisions going up against Flarick, and he just could read me like a book and perfectly like <laughs> yeah. countered every single thing did. I did. And, <laughs> I can see the twinkle of your eye. Yeah. <laughs> Good old rock. Nothing beats rock. <laughs> For some reason that stuck with me. It's just like I'm sitting here agonizing and Flarick's just effortlessly countering Absolutely me. Absolutely has turn. your number a hundred percent. That's excellent. Yeah, I know I don't remember that. Um okay, next question. You guys want to move on to uh one of the nerdier sumo ones? I Gabby, guess stop say. trying to add more content for us to make in the chat. Yeah, I mean, that's why continue, yeah. <laughs> continue to add more. <laughs> um, so I guess the, obviously they're all sumo-related questions, but this one more of like an actual what's our opinion kind of question. Mm. Um, who had the more impressive career? Were they to retire right now, Tamawashi or Takiyasu? Ooh, yes. this who submitted comes that from patron. Wata things uh, he had mentioned in the discord he is unfortunately busy during this so he can't join us apparently his D, &D campaign that he's running takes precedence uh so Shameful. is he really a true fan I probably so. not yeah i mean uh, props to the d and the dm props to the dungeon master <laughs> uh but yeah i absolutely love this question i don't think i could think of like two more like long-term Rikshi that have been around that have different levels, different kinds of success in their career Right, where it's so hard to choose which one <laughs> has had the more impressive career. They're outrageously equal in my mind. Like, obviously I like Takiyasu more, but like, this is an incredible question and I hate it so much because <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, like, okay, brief rundown. Tamawashi has two U shows. That's awesome. That's incredible. That's two more than anybody ever gets except for like a couple people yes um i have looked it up 61 rikshi ever have won two you show wow mm. okay and takayasu not one of those no uh, he has zero but he has <laughs> he has done something incredibly legendarily impressive that tamawashi hasn't he got the rank of ozeki i think those are like the two thesis statements of like which of those two things is more impressive um having 
one guy that made Ozeki but never a Yusho, and the other guy who never made Ozeki but got two Yusho. Yeah. And there's there's plenty of other details, by all means, but I yeah. think that's the that's what it what it comes down to in, in short. Yeah, what it comes down to, Takayasu has more of the counting stats. He's got more special prizes. Uh, he doesn't have more Kinboshi, but he does have a handful at five. Uh, he's got eight Jun Yusho, whereas Tamawashi, besides his two Yusho, he only has one other Jun Yusho. Uh, so he hasn't really been in the Yusho race all that often. But the other thing Tamawashi has going for him is his incredible uh, streak of being just competing every single Basho. He is the 10th most career matches of all time with 1,598. Seventh most Makuuchi matches of all time, 1,302. The second most consecutive career matches at 1,598. And the eighth most consecutive Makuuchi matches at 957. So that's another element of the Tamawashi argument. Uh, so let's start with Flarek. Flarek, hmm. who has had the more impressive career? Yeah, I was kind of zoning out when you were saying stats, but <laughs> so I'm just going to go with that's my normal. that's normal. With my basic is just going to judge it based on how long Ryan was listing stats, <laughs> not yeah. what they it, were. <laughs> it felt like pretty long, but I'm not sure who you're talking about. But my gut says, no, I I'm literally just going to kind of go with my gut and why I find more impressive. Uh, it's got to be Tamawashi for me. Uh, winning is pretty good. Ozeki, I think <sighs> Ozeki is always pretty pretty solid and pretty nice, but Getting some U shows is always pretty solid, and he's just been around for <laughs> such a long time. It's it's got to be Tamawashi. Uh, Jake, counter argument. Uh, yeah, so the reason that it's Takiyasu is <laughs> I no I I think it's uh is it a do you, do you value consistency in victory versus high, uh, or uh bleh, versus having a higher peak? I I think that. Weirdly enough, I kind of go against what I would normally pick in this kind of a situation. I, I think having a higher peak is probably, in my opinion, more something that I personally would value more. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, because Taki, Takiyasu has had more consistent uh, victories, but Tamawashi has more consistent attendance. So, yeah, I mean, I... I don't know. Again, I'm I'm still like this is like the hardest possible question or the hardest possible pair of guys to ask this question about. I I think that's why they asked this. Yeah, I know. I obviously it's a good question. <laughs> that's why so Wada like, brought this forward. Up, but like I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it. Yeah. I the, I get the whole thing of like higher peak and consistency, but even Tom Washley, he has an cons argument for being consistent as well. Yeah, he just didn't have the consistency at the stage or at the – yeah, Takayasu's peak was a more consistent peak even yeah. if it wasn't as high. So, like, that's mm. that's how you get to Ozeki, right? Yeah, and was... average wins per Basha would easily go to Takayasu instead of Tamawashi. Eh, you might True. have to take out injury Bashos because he's had a <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, of those. I would I would yeah. exclude, like, injury Bashos, but yeah. But, yeah, so point being higher peak versus consistency, but Tamawashi again. Consistency and attendance is also very important. I, it, I think I do have to go with Tamawashi because I have to get my own personal bias out of there. And mm. yeah, I, I, it, it sucks to say, but he's still my uh, Takiyasu's still my favorite. But I think I do have to go with Tamawashi here. Yeah, I'll point out in the chat. Rod Lunsford asked the equal conversation. No, Tamawashi has two U shows. It's easily yeah. Tamawashi. Easily Tamawashi. <laughs> uh, for me, when I was thinking about this question, it came down to Takeyasu Ozeki versus Tamawashi two U show. And when I looked up the stats on it, like I said, sixty one Rikshi have ever gotten two U show, over a hundred fifty hundred. Uh, well over a hundred Rikshi have made it up to the rank of Ozeki and couple that with Tamawashi's impressive longevity at the rank and winning his Yusho. Is he the oldest Rikshi, at least in the modern era to have won a Yusho? I can't remember if he, if his latest one made him the oldest one to win or if he was very close, but yeah. like mm. for me, I, I, I do think Tamawashi, but it is so very close. I, I do want to bring up, I think, uh, it, it would be worth comparing only modern era um, because there's three times as many Basho as there were in like the forties and before. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, you might have guys that only won one Yusho, whether or not it was defined as a Yusho yet. 
which I think happened in what, like 1910 ish, 1909. Uh, but but point being, like <laughs> the encyclopedic knowledge that is right. Uh, I was, the, I was honestly I was pretty sure it was Jin Maku, right, who did like the the twenty or the 1909. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah. I think that it's worth comparing, like how many Ozeki since whatever year that was that we did the modern system versus how many of those two Yusho winner are in there. I'm sure the numbers would probably still come out the same way, but um, it might not be as far apart. Uh, if you Mac, guys have find... you officially voted yet? Yeah. Uh, no, not yet, but Carla <laughs> Joe said even Shodai made it to Ozeki. <laughs> and Shodai has one Yusho. And Shodai does have one. So really, should we be arguing Takayasu versus Shodai? Ooh. <laughs> that actually might be a little bit better. I, I will have a hard time getting rid of my bias, though, on that one. You know what? I agree. That would be a better question because then we could all say Takayasu and move on with our lives. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, my official vote is Tamawashi. I mean, he's the Iron Man at this point. He's got two Yushu under his belt, which is massive for me. One Jun Yushu. I mean, it, no offense to Papa Yasu, but Ozeki, that's great. But, I mean... Carla Joe brings up a good point. Even Shodai made it to that. Tamawashi got two you show. I mean, that's that's pretty dang good. Plus, he's an Iron Man. I mean, come on. I do have one other thing that's, uh, I guess, kind of into the camp of Takiyasu. Takiyasu's name's going to be on a stone because of the Ozeki stone. You don't get that for you shows, I don't think, at least. Okay. There's a. There's You're just gonna remember this. All right. All right there's in a thousand, point. two thousand years. Hey, <laughs> we're gonna have the Tamawashi retirement podcast when he retires, and that'll be saved in the internet somewhere forever. And so <laughs> that counts as forever memorializing. And Takayasu him. absolutely will as well. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> you know, honestly, to true. counter the even Shodai made it to Ozeki, even Toku Shore, you got a U show. Is that really all that big of an accomplishment then? That's, that's a huge accomplishment. Yes, that's a massive that's accomplishment. Sure that's a massive, they're both massive that's accomplishments. Hold on here. <laughs> but I can be snarky right back is what I'm going for, I suppose. I did do a rough count of Ozeki promotions since 1958 when the six Bashos per year structure began, and I got 66 Ozeki promotion wow. in that time frame, which is wow. still more than the 61 Rikshi that have won two U shows in their career. Good to know. Holds up. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Flarick, why don't you choose a question? Uh, there's a list somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, why outline. don't you get a next question for us? Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude, there's an outline for this one. It's in the it's in the bonus episodes it's folder. In the bonus episode. I was I'm just here to answer Flarick's questions just here on for the good fly. Times, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Totally fair. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Well. We'll let Flarek pick the next question. I'll go ahead. Let's go with Saint Anger's question at the top of our list, where he asked, if the top grouping of Sanyaku are all strong and relatively on the same level, does that change the average number of wins for a Yusho? If so, what is the new average? And that is a very... Hold on, hold on. Before our listeners get comfortable, go get a drink. Maybe sit back a little bit. <laughs> Ryan has spreadsheets and data for this. Here's one, your so pee break. Yeah. Here's yeah. your pee break. <laughs> there's, there's the mute button. Nobody would blame you. Yeah, so... Like I was about to say, this is a very difficult question to answer because, like, how how do you define what makes the top of Sanyaku strong and how do you know if they're all on the same level? How am I going to know some random Bonske in 1961 whether these guys are at the same level or not? So how I chose to define it is how many Yokozuna and Ozeki are on a Bonske because that requires a certain level of strength to get to the Ozeki level. And so we're going to say the that's the metric that we're using yeah. to define a and, strong and that's, Bonske. And that's like an attainable amount of uh, diligence for us to to make some sort of conclusion here, like without yeah. – Without a without spending weeks of our lives researching the 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 relative strengths of a guy who made Komasubi back in the forties or something. No, about an hour to an hour and a half of spreadsheet computing. Yeah, that's what it took. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, just yeah. a minor little project. Yeah, just, just just a minor a little amount. bit. So what I did is I have all of the U shows 
um, starting from May of 1949, and I chose May of 1949 because that is when we consistently had 15 matches per Basho, and I just wanted to make it easy on myself and not compare. Okay, this is when they had 11 matches per Basho versus like 10 matches versus 13 matches. So this data is all from May 1949 forward. And so the what we have is hold on let me i messed up my spreadsheet okay it's better now so the number of <laughs> you Yoko Zuda, with, with, you're, you're okay Google there ryan <laughs> I, I got, you guys don't even have access to the spreadsheet i, I, I know i got you pretty good it. at spreadsheets who could help you out shut up it's me <laughs> um so the number of yokozuna and ozeki that are that have been on a bonds ranges anywhere from two total to eight total during that time frame and so what i did is I took the uh, average number of Yusho wins for every Basho where there were eight Ozeki and Yokozuna, and then the same for seven, six, five, four, three, two. Okay. Uh, And so when you look at it, it, my thinking was, okay, if you have like eight Yokozuna and Ozeki, that's very strong competition to be going up against. That's a lot more chances to pick up losses against the stronger competition. Against each other, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so the the number of you shows might actually be lower when there's strong competition as opposed to when maybe there's like four or three guys in the top and you don't really have as many chances to lose. But the data did not back that up in the slightest. So hmm. there have been five Basho ever with eight Ozeki and Yokozuna. So not a whole lot, but there are the average number of wins for a you show in those five Basho is 14.2. Wow, over 14. Holy yeah! Cow. And all of those you show were won by either a Yokozuna or an Ozeki. And then you drop down to seven Yokozuna or Ozeki on a Bonske. There's 116 instances of that, so quite a bit more data. And there you're looking at 13.69 wins nice. uh, for the you show winner and about 91% of those Yushos in that time frame were won by a Yokozuna or Ozeki. Dropped down to six. The average uh, number of wins for the Yusho winner goes up slightly from 13.69 to 13.74. Basically the same right there. Uh, there's 136 instances of a six Yokozuna and Ozeki Bonske, and about 90% of the Yushos were won by a Yokozuna or Ozeki. Sure. Go down to five, and they hear the numbers start to drop a bit. You get to 13.5 wins for the Yusho winner, and 85% of those are won by a Yokozuna or Ozeki. Then if you have four Yokozuna and Ozeki, then the average number of wins drops down to 13.16, and the uh, num- the percentage of Yusho won by a Yokozuna or Ozeki in that time frame is 70%. And then you drop down to three, the average number of wins for the Yusho is 13.37, and 58% of those Yusho are won by Yokozuna or Ozeki. And then you have four Bashos where you have two Yokozuna and Ozeki, three of which we had last year in 2023. Uh, And (laughs) the average number of wins for the Yusho in that time frame is 12.75, and 75% of those were won by a Yokozuna or Ozeki. So the data heavily shows <laughs> the stronger the top of the Bonske, the more Yokozuna and Ozeki you have, the stronger the Yusho wins are going to be, the strong, the more likelihood that you're going to have a Yokozuna and Ozeki to win the Yusho, which makes sense. You have more Yokozuna and Ozeki. They're, it's you're, you're more the likely are to bad. win, but... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, but, it felt a, a little counterintuitive to me because you'd think, okay, all the totally. strong guys are going to go against each other and beat the crap out of each other, and everybody's going to end up with four losses. Yeah, I'm I, so glad I you no restated the question. <laughs> I, I have no good explanation for that, but that's that's wild that it not only shows a trend, but it shows the exact opposite trend of what you would intuitively, or at least what I think all of us kind of intuitively would have guessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, and for yeah. the jerks in chat saying Ryan is still talking and I can't remember the question. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to notice that. <laughs> I was too busy talking, Mac. Why would I have noticed? 
<laughs> the question was the top if the top grouping of Sanyaku are all strong and relatively on the same level, does that change the average number of wins for a Yusho? And the answer is yes. The Resounding, more, yes. <laughs> the more Yokozuna and Ozeki you have on a Bonds K, the higher the number of Yusho the higher number of wins the Yusho will take. Somebody can yeah, rephrase no, it. That, that makes sense. <laughs> uh but I did I did a little bit more. Could it stop? Uh so <laughs> Oh, God. I, was, I was curious. I feel like we've always talked about we're in a period of transition, like ever since we started watching sumo wrestling. It's kind of felt like we're in a period of transition. Haku Ho's reign was waning and nobody's really fully picked up that torch from Haku Ho. Terra no Fuji did for about a year until his injuries caught up to him. Mm -hmm. So looking at it all time from 1949 to now, the average number of Yokozuna and Ozeki on a Bonske is 5.7. And the average number of wins it takes to win a Yusho across that time frame is 13.6. And so then I looked at exclusively from when we started watching Sumo, the very first Basho we watched, which was September 2016, Goedo mm -hmm. Zensho Yusho, mm -hmm. to now. The average number of Yokozuna and Ozeki drops by one from 5.7 to 4.7. And the average uh, number of wins per Yusho drops by about half uh, a win, from 13.6 to 13.1. So maybe what we are intuiting is based on the last eight-ish years of data where that is kind of the case? Yeah. Yeah, we've had, we've had fewer um, Yokozuna and Ozeki at the top of the Bonds K, and the number of wins... Per you Which show equates has to gone a lower down. win per you show. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, but long term, the exact opposite. Hmm. What? What do you mean long term, yeah. the exact opposite? What? I thought you just... Never mind. We huh? don't need to rehash it again. What? Huh? I, I'm the one who's lost. <laughs> no. You three are on the same page. You guys <laughs> I was go say, on. I'm yeah. following. <laughs> it's, there it seems to kind of imply the harder the competition, the stronger... Yeah, the stronger the win has to be. Show 14 and 1... Kind of 13 and 2 has to be like the absolute bottom, but 14 and 1 and 15 and 0 becomes the more common or the more expected if you want to actually get a U show at that point. Yeah. It's it's an interesting trend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I like it. I did not I did not expect that. Good find. Good spreadsheet. Uh -huh. Oh, Ryan. Thank uh, you. Fo follow up question to you, Ryan. Can you isolate the data from when there was only one Ozeki? No. Isolate. <laughs> Not on this episode. <laughs> Not on this episode, but yes. You have given... Physically, we are capable. <laughs> Long-term, yes. Short-term, no. Old Van One, you have given him a new mission. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Flaric, you pick one? Our... Flaric, are you ready? All right. Well, actually, found... okay, so hold on. Uh, okay. he, 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 I, he I don't know. Clarified. It's been Shut up, Flaric. <laughs> More spreadsheeting. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> this is how I die. <laughs> he clarified, uh, like like Takake show with one Yokozuna. And as I mentioned, we had three of those Bashos in 2023. I can take a look at those three Bashos really quick. Yeah, uh, we're going to do another question. We're going to do another question. Flaric. <laughs> All right. Pick one that Ryan would find really, yep. really interesting. <laughs> I am going to uh, go with the question from Sad Little Watanabe Samurai. Uh, do we think that Takakesho has a long-term future in Sumo, and will he still be wrestling by the end of the decade? And I see a little sub-bullet here. Takakesho will be 33 by November of 2029, Basho. Can he make it to 33? isn't even all that super old is in Sumo. No. Like, with Takakesho's, the miles that he's putting on himself. Ooh. Yeah. That's the question. End of the decade. That's, oh, man. I guess I would say no. I feel like the injuries are getting worse for him. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'd have to side with you on there, Jake. I don't see more than maybe three more years out of Takake Show. I'd like to. But well, that's, I mean, I think three max at this point. Yeah. But just with his injuries and with the rising level of competition, I mean, we never did decide what to call this new crop. I still like the Nuggets, but okay, fine. <laughs> the we still don't the know nugs. how he's going to fare with these new with these new Rikshi coming up the ranks. So if his injuries keep plaguing him and he keeps running into issues trying to get his Kachikoshin maintain his Ozeki rank, this is this this is just going to be nothing but trouble for him moving forward. If yeah. if his gut has anything to say though, the man does love some Nuggets. 
and eating them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, I it's the neck injury that spooks me the most. That I think I kind of agree with you. Where I'm not, I'll be very surprised if he makes the 33. But I have another kind of follow up question on this. Uh, do we think he is the type of person who will retire immediately after Rick losing the Ozeki rank, or will he stick it out? Ooh, that's another good question. Is he gonna be I, a good way though? I think if he can't make it back in like the oh. get ten wins as a Sekiwake, I think there's a decent shot at him retiring. But it, it he's still so young though. He's still only twenty seven years old. And so to say to say that say he gets a losing record in the next two Basho and he isn't able to get ten wins, that would take us through uh september of this year thinking that he might retire at 27 or 28 years old that seems just so early um but we just know he's got so much time in sumo like his neck is 78 years old on its own oh yeah oh brittle nothing but brittle it's honestly hard for me to see takakesho competing below the rank of ozeki especially when to Flair's point, like Goedo, you've been Ozeki for five, six years. Um, it'd just be almost beneath you at that point to do it. If you're a short term Ozeki, like Shodai, Mitake Yumi, Tochi Noshi, and Takeyasu, kind of makes sense for them to stick around. But when you've been there for so long, like Takakesho has and has had the success that Takakesho has, would he want to continue? And he wouldn't he wouldn't have the uh the benefit of missing every other Basho. As but, knows that, and keep his rank. But Koto Shokiku stuck around for quite a while, that's, and he was a long time. That's Ozeki. true. That's true. Koto Shokiku does buck that trend. Yeah, but he definitely... he's he's an outlier more than the norm. I would say the norm at this point. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, but he yeah for him, he didn't have catastrophic injuries. He definitely had wear and tear. But like, yeah, he was he was able to still wrestle well, even if it wasn't at true. his peak. I don't know. That's tough. Mm-hmm. Another good question. <laughs> yeah, and Takakesho, uh, at least according to Sumo DB, he does not have a kabu, uh, like an elder stock, so oh. he wouldn't necessarily be able to stick around in the uh, in the Sumo Association as like a coach or or uh, or something like that. Um, that I wonder if he's interested in that. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't no, know. It's not a good thing. Yeah, he's he's definitely a guy that's uh, not hard, not not easy to read what kind of guy he is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's something he'd be interested in. I don't know if that's something that he'd be good at. I don't. I just don't know. But yeah, that's. I, I guess the my my answer to the actual question itself. No, I I don't see him around for another six years. That that seems like too much. That seems too long to to put our trust in it. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I just can't see that happening. Um. Okay. To follow yeah, up. And I, Sorry. Good. Yeah, I was yeah to uh, to also answer it. I think you bring a break coin about the Kabu. I think elder stocks are hard to come by, and I think because of that, he'll probably try to stick it out. Like Guido had like an a, a elder stock for quite some time, and so it was just kind of a matter of when. Just kind of like Endo has yeah. one just apparently sitting in his name already. It's just kind of yeah. like when he decides to call quits. As an Ozeki, Takakesho should have less trouble than most people in getting one, but still. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, Ryan. Did you have a follow up on that the data? Uh, well, I've got two things. First, I'm gonna. Yeah, but, but also. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but wait, <laughs> hold up on the spreadsheet stuff. We're taking a break. <laughs> We're taking a break. <laughs> but yeah, it's. But I think also going to depend on the, what finally caused him to mope from Ozeki. Is it going to be a Nick injury? Injury where it's just kind of like I cannot continue. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to kind of come down to that. I think there is a real possibility where. It's just as like I cannot safely keep on doing this, so I'm done. So agreed. We'll find uh, out. I actually spreadsheet wasn't... away. I Ryan. wasn't going back to the spreadsheet. Damn it! <laughs> uh, Not yet, at least. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> uh, we we had a comment from Ian. Uh, his saying, "My biggest sumo regret is never getting Tochi Noshin versus Takakesho when both had the Ozeki rank." Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, "Oh, they never fought each other as Ozeki." Looked it up. They did not. And it's Ooh. really impressive the dance that these two did to avoid facing each other as an Ozeki. So <laughs> Tochi Noshin was o- Ozeki first, um, and he fought Takakesho three times be- as an Ozeki before Takakesho uh, made the rank of Ozeki. And then when Takakesho made the rank of Ozeki, 
that was when Tochi Noshin had dropped from the rank of Ozeki and was fighting as a Sekiwake to regain his Ozeki rank for the first time. And so then they, they fought that Basho. And then the next time they fought, Takakesho had dropped from the Ozeki <laughs> rank, and Tochi Noshin <laughs> had regained his Ozeki rank after getting 10 wins from Sekiwake. Uh, and so Takakesho was now a Sekiwake, and Tochi Noshin was a uh, Ozeki. And then by the time they fought again, Takakesho had regained his Ozeki rank, and Tochi Noshin was down at Maigashira 6. So those two really That's did uh, a, a dance to avoid those each other, each other fighting as an Ozeki. Were, were and before had... anybody could say anything else, my very, very brief spreadsheet thing to follow up on <laughs> all of them's comment uh, asking about Takakesho being the sole Ozeki with one Yokozuna. We had those three Bashos in 2023. Uh, they were a 14-1 and Yusho by Terano Fuji in that time, a 12-3 and Yusho by Kidi Bayama, and a 12-3 and Yusho by Takakesho. So, in general, I'd say low, lower totals. Yes. Uh, I, I love how we're all just absolutely dogpiling on Ryan for bringing up spreadsheets and stuff, and that's, like, one of the main attractions of our show is that we get right. into nerdy <laughs> numbers and stuff. That's exactly what we're here for and what people are listening for. Stats. Nothing but stats. But you know what's more important? <laughs> what? Is, is Dragon Ryan. <laughs> yes. As always. 100%. 100%. Oh, man. Okay, um... I think uh, Ryan, why don't you pick the next question? <laughs> I, I, I I did the spreadsheet one recently. Oh, that's okay. right. We kind of like skipped around a little bit. I think it's my turn then. All right, go for it. Um, Anna Fants asks, uh, I need to just move this over. I can barely turn that far. I got too many dang screens. <laughs> Anna Fants asks, what's your favorite Mawashi color and does it affect how you view new Rikshi? The bolder the color, the more I tend to like the newbie. Ooh. I think I agree with that. Bold colors are are more fun. Um, I think my favorite one actually is gonna be Aqua. I I think that his just the teal like light teal. No, it's bright green. Um, <laughs> oh, it's bright. Oh, or at least it has been at some point. Ryan Ryan's face makes me doubt it because <laughs> Ryan's no, probably I... the one who remembers better than me. <laughs> No, I said bright green sounds right. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah. I, I hope I'm not going crazy. But I, I, I like I'm that he has a bold, <laughs> silly color to go with his bold, silly uh, Kakenage first style of wrestling. I think that's very silly. But, yeah, I, I like bright greens. Um, can't go wrong with, like, Ura's bright pink. There's, I mean, um, it is a bright green. Yeah, Kota Shogaku famously was a bright, uh, a bright, deep blue. I always loved his color. Um, what comes to mind for you guys? For me, it's Chio Maru's like emerald green that he had for a while. Mm. That to me was just I, I just loved how vibrant it was. And now that I'm looking at Aqua's Mawashi, I'm like, yeah, no, I I think I'm right there with you. I like the big, bold, bright colors. I think Mitoru had orange for a while. I know Kaise mm. had a bright orange when he wrestled. I'm like, yeah, I like bigger and bolder colors. Yeah, I'm finding some pictures. It looks like Aqua also had like a uh, bright baby blue kind of. That's the one that I'm remembering was the baby blue one. Oh, and a teal one. So yeah, maybe he's had three different colors. But yeah, the, no. the bright green is the one that comes to mind for me. That's always the the one that makes me think Aqua. Yeah, for me, I mean, my my favorite color is red. So I I like the I like the dark deep red. I feel like Takayasu kind of has like a dark burgundy like a maroon, red. Yeah, mm. yeah Kisano Sato had a good one. But I also do really like the black Mawashi, but I feel like you need to earn the black Mawashi. Mm. Like, uh, I, I don't want to see a Maigashira 15 waltzing around with the black Mawashi. I think you need to have earned that a little bit. Because I kind of, I, I asso associate it with like when I first started watching, I had a misnomer in my head that once you were like Ozeki or Yokozuna, you had to have a black Mawashi. Yeah, I remember so I think, that Yeah, too. I remember that. A lot, a lot of them at the time did rock the black Mawashi. And so I thought it's like, oh, once you're that high, you, you don't get to have a fun color. You're just black now because that's something with the rank, which isn't the case. Uh, as Fuji you can see, black, right? mm -hmm. I think so. And I, I feel like Hakuho had black but i don't I think he like remember. a brownish black Red brown at some point yeah somewhere. yeah but i i feel like black is something you need to earn but that's just because like 
me misremembering something in the past, but <laughs> sure. it's, it's it's stuck it's stuck with me that I feel like you need to earn that black Mawashi. Yeah, didn't like Teretsuyoshi use black for a while? Or maybe yeah. he had like a dark blue. I don't know. I don't remember. But yeah, uh, it's, quick... it's 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 not a status symbol. It's a choice, right? So... Quick quick note from uh, Olvan One. They said they need to go, but can they catch the rest of the recording on YouTube? Absolutely. This will go. We will post this for everybody publicly once this is done. Yeah. It's going to be one of those live videos on YouTube, so you have to go to the live tab. Just as a heads up. It won't yeah, be we'll, under we'll make sure section. to spread the word on it. But yeah, it'll be, it might even be like tomorrow or so, but we'll make it, we'll make it available to everybody. Later. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> a couple other, a couple other things from the chat. Um, do you like when a Rikshi changes? Mawashi goes. No. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I, I I love the uh I love when it's always kind of like when they're losing and they try changing and they're just kind of like oh my the goodness mid was, change. <laughs> the is mid this the reason why? I feel is like Hokuto Fuji why? changed his belt color halfway through this Basho. Yeah, he uh they they make fun of it a lot on the Breakfast and Basho uh, uh live stream, but like the uh, Hokuto Fuji's uh, silver one looks kind of looks kind of gross. Looks a little greasy. <laughs> <laughs> It, you uh, need some of that brown Mawashi detergent. Make those it's, colors pop. It's like when you get a white car, it's going to show the stains a little bit more. It's going to show a little bit more dirt on it. <laughs> but no, I, I don't know. I, th I feel like that one, bright silver, is, is one that I'm not a huge fan of just because it I, – I don't know. I just feel like higher contrast is, is more fun to see. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I like his darker blue one. But, yeah, he's definitely – I'm pretty positive this isn't the first time that we've seen it where he's on a losing streak and he changes and then it turns out okay. So he's also a guy that we've always suspected is pretty susceptible to uh, mental, the mental game, right? Um, mm -hmm. Somebody that's like dependent on streaks or dependent on like he'll win until he loses and then he keeps losing after that once his confidence is broken. Yeah. So yeah, I wonder if that kind of thing is more important to somebody like him. Also, so... congratulations to Olivamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just reading the chat like, hey, congratulations. And we're sorry. <laughs> We're sorry. The Chang Takakesho name would have been awesome. <laughs> Changing your Mawashi color is the anime haircutting moment. Yeah, no, I dig that. <laughs> Heck yeah. What's up, Flair? It's great. Uh, no, for me, I, I also like the kind of brighter colors. It always seems kind of lame when they go, like, to the dark, the black when they go to Zeki. The drab uh, color. I think my favorite was, uh, the, my favorite color change had to be when Tochi no Shin got his Ozeki rank, and he got that, like, nice, good purple, like, lavender Mawashi. Ooh, yeah, the purple one's Tochi's good. Purple. And I, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I love the story even more because, like, it was pairing, like, his old Oyakatas, which is kind of, <laughs> seems kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but no, it's no, definitely no. very it's sentimental. Honor, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, I something that's usually not talked about, well, about those, like, gold bands that go on the back of uh, Mawashi's, like, right at their little tail. I know Takiyasu used to have that. I think Tochi no Shin did too. Uh, usually it seems like an Ozeki thing. Uh, go ahead, Ryan. Uh, it's nothing to do with rank. It's a maker's mark from the yeah. maker of the Mawashi. Ah, uh, that would do it. Yeah, That's really cool. I like that. It's, I, yeah, think it's, I think it's like high, like a highly regarded one, but yeah, that those two little gold stripes that you'll see at the end of the Mawashi is a maker's mark. That's fun. Yeah, okay. there's only a couple of people who actually make Mawashis. I know they go for like hundreds of thousands of dollars as well. So that's why they're usually gifted to people because Are they paying for yourself is wild. I, Pretty sure, yeah. I thought it was like hundreds of thousands of yen. Maybe I missed. That's what I but thought. Like, I don't know. It, it's I know oh, it's so like two bucks. I think so. Oh God, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we. I know that it's definitely got a comma in there. There's at least four digits, maybe five digits. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember. Maybe I, yeah, maybe more like ten thousand or so. Either way, it's definitely ludicrously it's... more than you would expect a plain sheet of silk to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, one one other uh, Mawashi color story that I remember is uh, Kagiyaki wears yellow, um, in honor of Wajima, who is a great mm. yokozuna from like the seventies, I think seventies, eighties. Uh, but they're from the same town, and Wajima famously wore a gold Mawashi, so that's what uh, Kagiyaki does as well. Hmm. Apparently, a Kesha Mawashi can cost at least ten thousand U.S. dollars. The low end for a Kesha Mawashi. Ah, okay. Ah. <laughs> oh, Kesha Mawashi. So, like the the the, the full decorated. Yeah, the full decorated one. Gotcha. That's the low end. Is that? I'm like, man. Then what is a regular Mawashi? 
I will continue to dig. <laughs> Later, at another time. Yeah. Uh, Mac, why don't you choose the next question? <laughs> okay, I can do that again. Uh, let's see. Let's go with uh, two times. How often do former Suke Bitos outshine their former masters? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, that was one I was trying to think. How can I spreadsheet this? But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know of a of a great. Is there a good answer? way we can track who My... was a Suke Bito to who? Yeah, no. No. Nah. Um, like you my I just have to hear about it, I think. Yeah, like I think the best you can do is assume everybody in the lower division is a Tsuke Bito to somebody. And then there's hundreds of people in the lower divisions and there's 70 people that are up in the top division. So I'm going to say not often. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you that whoever Hakuho was a Tsuke Bito for, he's better than them. So at least yes. that time, guarantee it. Yeah. Mm. Other times, Good yeah, call. it's hard to say. Um, I'm sure that uh, I, I would love to know if there is a good way that you can, uh, like, if there's if there's some sort of database out there of who used to work with who. Like, I, I mean, there's there's plenty of anecdotes out there, but like, I yeah, I can't think of anywhere that I've ever seen other than just somebody saying, oh yeah, he used to be this guy Sukabito. Like, that's that's great but like i i how do we how do we look it up how do we know other than just like parsing it from news stories here or there that'd be really cool to see from a data perspective but yeah i don't i don't know of uh i don't know of anywhere that we could do that yeah i, I read somewhere in the chat here apparently you can get a new professional mawashi for like a hundred bucks so it oh, might okay. be i think it's the cat the, the kesha mawashi that i was thinking the about. kesha mawashi <laughs> yeah Pretty sure yeah, no, it's Kesho. It is Kesho. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the world I'm living in. But yeah, the you low end Kesho was like 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to next question. This one from Rod Lunsford. He's asking about our logo, the handprint in the GSB logo, which you can see in Jake's screen. You can see in my screen right now on YouTube. It's also Whose right hand? Middle. Yeah. Whose hand is that? I'm guessing Ryan's. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so the, the current iteration of the GSB logo, this is actually the third iteration of the GSB logo. When we first started, before we started the podcast, we were working on, like, what should our logo be? And as always, it's going to be a handprint. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it started off as, like, an American flag-colored Tegata, um, but I don't think we ever – used we that. printed one or two test shirts with it and that's it you can yeah. find that online in the uh, japan times photo with kisa no sato oh okay i was like i thought you were gonna say you can find that on our red bubble or something no <laughs> no no if you go back and look at the japan times photo with us and yeah. kisa no okay. sato yeah there you, you go. and ryan are wearing that. it <laughs> all right no it's uh, you and flick you and flick yeah. are wearing it ryan and i are wearing oh, tachi yeah. shirts that's why so we that were just babies that yes. was the original GSB logo, but there I don't is. think we ever really professionally used it. No. That... By, by the time that we even went to Japan, those shirts were already like, crap, we don't have anything with our logo on it. We have these <laughs> old test shirts from a We have these old ago. test shirts yeah. we were working on. Um, and then we changed it to, like, the more realistic, less kind of, like, uh, computer graphic um yeah. Is that still print. our Twitter profile picture, maybe? No, I I changed it like three years after we <laughs> we had updated <laughs> the logo, but it is up to date now. Um, the current iteration, this one, uh, we uh, 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 there you go. We that actually, what, there you go. <laughs> we actually don't know. Um, we found some art online that we uh, we actually had a graphic design buddy of ours create this version of it just based on. Uh, just based on shapes that we were able to find that just looked the prettiest. So combined a few things into just, there you go. It's a, it's clean. It's identifiable. It's not overly complicated. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't have small enough details that it would get in the way of printing it on stuff. So that was kind of where we were going for. We just wanted something mm -hmm. that looked authentic, but not overly complicated. Um, and yeah, had we realized back in the day how easy it was to actually make Tagatas with just a $5 ink pad you get off Amazon and plain paper. Yeah, we probably would have done something with our own hands. But like at this point, no, that looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, why bother changing it now? Yeah, N none of the handprints have ever been any of our own hands. We just right. no. I don't know. Did we ever pay anybody on Fiverr for that one? or This one? This... No, this one was a favor from yeah. Ricardo. 
Okay. Oh, nice. What do you mean the hand's way too big to be mine? What does that even <laughs> mean? It's huge, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, like huge, tall. It's tall. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Yeah, we we it was a pain in the butt to find somebody with hands that big to make our logo on these uh, banners behind us. <laughs> Scoured the internet. <laughs> uh, good stuff. All right, Flarek, what's our next question? I have to do this again? Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want us to just take you out of the rotation or something Ooh. or what? Ian, <laughs> hey, I kind of like your idea. All right. Maybe we should do our own Tagata as a merch item. That's How many people really idea. want to buy our handprints, though? <laughs> people who want to frame us for crimes. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> We're on to you, Ian. <laughs> I have your fingerprints Watching now. You, buddy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with another one from Sad Little Wannabe Samurai. Uh, should crying baby sumo have a bond decay? And there's Ooh. another bullet point that says ceremonies where babies held by Rikishi compete to see who cries first. First to cry wins. Second bullet point. Crying <laughs> babies are believed to scare away the spirits. Before we answer this question, I just need to let everybody listening know how big of a miracle it is that Flarek is still doing this podcast with us <laughs> seven years later. It's it is a challenge, I will say. Because <laughs> honestly, like I, I was when I signed up for this, it was just kind of like, oh yeah, I'll show up and talk. Like maybe if I feel like learning some things, but and like we'll do a couple ep three episodes for Ambasho, I guess. I I was trying to push against that. <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a big big proponent of a shorter midway. Always have been. But <laughs> but then uh Ryan and uh Ryan Jake most in particular, but definitely Mac too, he gets uh, definitely behind this caught up in everything. Yeah. They <laughs> want to push to make this bigger and bigger. And it's just kinda of like okay, go ahead, but because of this, I'm just gonna be have no, no part of it. I'm just gonna step out of the way and just show up. Honestly, I I would be devastated not just for like the show itself wouldn't be as good with only three of us, but like, I don't know how I would keep up with you. Like, what, <laughs> we've kind of like, we've kind of like the the rest of our friendship has atrophied just a little bit because like, we hang out all the time doing podcasting, so like, we don't need to like it's... meet up in person as often. Right. Anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> this this is definitely our main hangout time. Yeah, We'd have to right? find yeah. some other activity. <laughs> Speaking of which, hey, I will be seeing you guys at least like two of you later tonight. Also, right. yes. <laughs> Jake, are you coming too? Uh, no. Uh, Katie, okay. Katie, when she hopped in a minute ago, was because they're they're leaving. They're going up to green, so uh, I have my own. Uh, I'm on Child. my own for today. No, <laughs> gotcha. no, with the baby. Mm. So I'm on oh, my own okay. for today. Oh. I am going to take a nap. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, big night for you! Hell yes! Maybe even like, maybe even like a bath. I could oh. watch a movie. Oh my god! I could sit in one place for two straight hours and watch a movie. Oh my god! Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm watching a movie okay. tonight. It doesn't even matter which one. <laughs> but no, honestly, I need some. I dr I desperately need some introvert time. Otherwise, yes, I would come and do game night because I'm traveling the next two weekends for sumo. Okay, yeah. Uh, anyway, but... back to sad little wannabe samurai. Right, <laughs> <laughs> the crying baby sumo with the bonsuke. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, I I don't know if it's like a, a a full on ritual as much as it is a fun tradition, right? But like, the the I don't know how fun it is for the babies. <laughs> That's about to say this 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 screaming, they're crying. Well, <laughs> if the rickshaw's doing it right, they are. If you're really bad at it, then maybe the baby has fun. <laughs> but yes, the like the, Yama. The, Yama's really oh, bad. At it. Yama, Yama is bad at it because he loves holding my my toddler, and and Sam absolutely loves Yama back. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, uh, Jake, Katie, Katie's listening. You better clean up the Legos. <laughs> You're driving, Katie. Get your eyes on the road. <laughs> they probably stopped because when you travel with the baby, he said he makes you stop all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, I'm gonna clean up the Legos while watching. I don't know. A Knight's Tale. That would be a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I grew up on that one. Not a good movie, but an awesome movie. It's good to put in the background. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Dune 2 Showtimes. Oh, there you it. go. Already saw, already it. saw it? Yep. And, you, and we haven't talked about it yet? Okay, we need to okay, wrap up this podcast because me, me and Flair need to catch up a little bit. 
<laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so so uh, crying baby sumo. Um, <laughs> yes, it would be. Gr- I would love it if there was a Bonske of just like, because it's <laughs> the crier. All the pictures I've seen, it's like two or three wrestlers at a time, and it's like a little PR kind of thing at a you know a shrine or or something or other before a tournament, and yeah, they get a couple babies, but. I, I do wish that it would be more gamified. That would be hilarious just to like mm. see them try and like uh, game theory. How do you make a baby cry the fastest and without getting in legal <laughs> Sounds trouble? Sounds so cynical. <laughs> <laughs> I know Sounds that'd just evil. be really funny to see somebody like Takakesha who's insanely like rules and competition driven and loophole finding kind of thing. <laughs> How can I make this baby cry the fastest? Oh, <laughs> uh, like, there be loopholes. You can't take candy from the baby. That's too easy. Oh, well, that's yeah. a given, Flair. They, they'd have to add a lot of rules if Takakesha were involved. Like, they'd have to, like, officially write down somewhere. Like, you cannot harm the baby. You cannot pinch <laughs> yeah. the baby. Like, you cannot whisper in its ear, like, your mama's never coming back. That's actually, I feel like that would be a good one. I feel like that, I feel like that kind of thing should be allowed. That's. They can they can recover. They're toddlers, but <laughs> but yeah. So as far as should there be a Bonske, I don't remember what Jake said. I zoned out for a little bit. Yes, but uh, my yeah. my belief is the babies should not be ranked, but the baby criers should. Like the people that make the baby cry. Okay, should. That, yes, that's that I, I can see. That's how I interpret that. I can it. see yeah. based on the success that they have of making there babies you go. cry. And I think we're all in agreement. Takakeshi is competitive enough that he would be Yokozuna of making babies cry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Next? next question. <laughs> Sounds like Mac. Oh, is it mine? Sure. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> we lost the thread. Just go for it. That's, that's, I don't know. <laughs> um, from HPO, what are your blood types? RH factor included, and would you donate blood slash plasma, or are you saving it as a blood prize? <laughs> First of all. Why do you need to know? Is HPO like, the same people... guy that wanted our Tagata like with our fingerprints no. on it? Okay. No, luckily no. not. But no, maybe they're Ian. working in <laughs> maybe Ian they're working the in maybe they're working in cahoots or something. Yeah, cahoots was the word that came to mind as well. Yeah. yeah. Are you wanting to clone us? <laughs> what are you really going for? They're here? gonna start a competing sumo podcast with our clones. <laughs> yeah, but they, I can, they'd make I can a super soldier off. of podcasting with uh with the four of us mixed together. <laughs> Yeah. So I do actually know my blood type, and I am A, and I am uh, positive for the RH factor, so I am A positive. Um, I do not know my blood type, and I also don't know what an RH factor is. Is that the plus Me or minus neither. part of it? That's the plus or minus oh, part. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I don't know either. No I'm sure it's in my medical record somewhere. It has not come up. <laughs> there you go. Which I, am I, I hope positive. I don't catastrophically bleed somewhere that i need to know that <laughs> but at least at the yeah. moment no i do not know <laughs> yeah i am o positive uh i usually donate regularly i'm trying to log into my thing so i can brag about how many gallons i've done the website is are you up to gallons now oh yeah for sure i mm. i started like in high school and just like never oh stopped. i didn't know that good for you man yeah, yeah. but it I... is let me go ahead ryan i was well, just I saying i've up. Never been able to donate my plasma or blood. I have Crohn's disease, and because of that, uh, the medication that I take is a IV drug every eight weeks where I sit down and just get a big old IV bag of something put into my blood, which weakens my immune system, which is probably not good to put in other people's bodies. So I am <laughs> unable to donate blood. Probably not. It would so do we more harm your than blood. Good. <laughs> so we should use your blood to pay the blood sacrifice is what I'm hearing. Ryan's Because you have so much to go around. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. we want to be sending out the worst blood to everybody? Is that how this works? I don't know. If Flaric, if Flaric donates a lot of blood, he can't have much left. I don't really know <laughs> biology very well, but like, I, I need my blood. I actually am pulling back to like once a year because I'm focusing on actually having red blood cells for sports. Good sell, so. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like I have ten gallons at one point at right now. Dang, so. dude, good for you. Mm-hmm. Get wrecked, people. That's enough to fill up a whole <laughs> bag of water. Whole what? bag of water. That's what we were. That's what we were. A whole to Mac. people. A whole me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. It was clumsy, but we got there. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got one. Uh, as long as we're on silly joke questions here. Uh, Gabby Cat asks, what are the best pizza toppings? 
Ooh. Right, I'm going to say my wife asking the hard questions and my wife is a paying patron so she is allowed to ask <laughs> questions here. <laughs> Let me start off with something that I think we can all agree on and that's of course pineapple. Like of course it's the worst topping ever. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. It was uh, it's absolutely terrible. I can't. I've well, I've had pineapple on pizza exactly once. I thought it was fine. Yeah, you had that, the Hawaiian pizza with ham. It's pretty good. Didn't anger me. I thought I I, no. I liked the contrast. I, I thought it was fine. Meme or, meme topic or otherwise, I'm a hundred percent on the pineapple hate train. It's I, <laughs> I I hate it. It's it's like having a gusher on the pizza that a lot of times is invisible because of the coloring. <laughs> yes. And then all of a sudden, it's just like overwhelming pineapple taste, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah, I'm with you, uh, Jake. Pineapple is the worst. It's just it doesn't go with the whole savory part of it. And that's why I want my pizza. For for me, my favorite pizza topping, it depends because I like to get a good like white sauce pizza, and then um, I'm gonna be putting like chicken, bacon, onion, or mu- and mushrooms. So that's that's my typical go to pizza. But if I'm getting a typical red sauce pizza, then it's I'm a big sausage guy all the way. You had me till mushrooms there. Oh, that is delicious. <laughs> I yeah, I really like onion on pizza, especially red onion, just because it's like onion dialed up to eleven. But um, I don't think I really like other vegetable. I'm I for yeah for. Thank you for bringing up like other sauces and stuff. Like if I yeah. if I made my perfect pizza, it would be it would be like uh, I, I don't know if Domino still does it, but like it, uh, they had like a barbecue sauce pizza. Mm extra cheese on there and i would do like onions and chicken ooh and hot peppers hot peppers would be ooh, good on that go. but like traditional style pizza just the more types of meat the better for me i'm i'm a stereotypical lots of types of meat on a pizza kind of guy yep i'm a meat lovers guy meat is good i'll probably my favorite uh is capicola it's just kind of like a salty ooh, meat good call and uh, one of the places I get pizza from has that as an option, and I think that's why I enjoyed most. It's a good nice. time. <laughs> yeah, I going back to like the vegetables on a pizza. Like, I guess no, a good supreme pizza minus the olives is fine. Like green peppers, mushroom, onion. That might, and then you have to have like the pepperoni and sausage on there as well. I'm not going to eat a vegetarian pizza. Ugh, what's the point? Um, <laughs> Uh, we had a question but, uh, from Carla Joe. What is a white sauce pizza? Never heard like of it. Like a kind of like like Alfredo, Alfredo. or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's like a depends. It could be like either a creamy garlic sauce, which is fine. Love it. Or like an Alfredo sauce, which is great. I love it. Either way, I'm good. Is that a Midwestern thing maybe? Great. Loves it. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Love the white cream no matter what it tastes like. <laughs> Ryan loves the white cream. <laughs> he loves that white cream. <laughs> All right, what's the next question we got going that, on? Like, I know exactly what I just said. Look that you give to the camera. That was beautiful, Ryan. Oh, Thank my you. My God. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, I picked that one. So uh, who's next? Uh, Flair, do you want to pick or should we? No, don't make him do it. Don't make him do it. He'll leave. It'll be the final straw. <laughs> okay, I got uh, I got food in the oven. I gotta. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go. go tend to that. <laughs> I got no, a white probably... sauce pizza cooking. We've probably got time yep. for about two to three more questions, depending on how long we dilly dally on these. Um, I'm all for dilly dallying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's Mac. Let's put you on the spot from Super Skunk. What time does Mac get up in the morning, and how big are his cups of coffee? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so usually I'm awake between uh, five thirty and six most mornings, unless it's warmer. Um, usually plus 33 degrees Fahrenheit, um, in which case I'll probably get up around 445 to go for a run, depending on how long those runs are. I also might wake up at 430. And then from there... I'm uh, sorry to yeah, interrupt cause... you, Mac. Every, every, all three of us are like looking away, doing something else as you're going. I figured that. <laughs> Ryan took out his phone, Flerk's on his other screen. I, I was know. checking if my wife had texted is. that she made it yet or anything. <laughs> So then uh, normally I have about 16 ounces of uh, fresh ground coffee in the morning, plus another 16 ounces later in the day of either coffee or tea. And that's basically daily. So I am a lot of caffeine rolling through the day. (laughs) And that's why your doctor's worried about your blood pressure. (laughs) And that's why my blood pressure and a lot of other things might be a problem for me right now. (laughs) 
but I'm what's, awake. <laughs> what's everybody else's like? How do you get awake in the morning? Like, how do you get up and decide you're gonna deal with another day? What does it take? Toddler doesn't give me an option right now. My, it's <laughs> it's not uh, it's not easy, but it's simple. <laughs> yeah, coffee for... and Red Bull. I I like a big cup of coffee and I like a eight ounce sugar free Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. I I drink a lot of energy drinks, but like I kind of um, un unlike Mac, <laughs> I stick to just <laughs> stick to just one of them. But like I nope. usually uh, I usually just sip at it like all morning. Um, you know, it's just something because I I hate coffee. I I don't know what it is, but like the the taste of coffee, I just despise it. So. If on days on days where I need caffeine, which is like most but not all, yeah, I'll just have a, an energy drink that I'll like slowly sip for a while, just because I mean it tastes good, and yeah, obviously a That's little it. bit of caffeine is gonna be good. I don't know I that so. I've ever tasted an energy drink and been like, yeah, I want more of that. Try try <laughs> without, one like the... without the need for it. Does it really taste good? I think so, but right. I would I would <laughs> say you got to try like the the like zero calorie zero sugar ones. Because the like I tried one that was not a zero calorie one recently, and it was like overpoweringly, disgustingly sweet. It was Ooh. like just a, it was just a can of like it, it felt like sugar wise, like it was just drinking maple syrup, but it just tasted like gasoline. Um, but like what if, <laughs> it's just I, I don't know that when they dial stuff back to to get rid of calories and get rid of sugar and all that. I'm not, I'm not saying that's good for you, but it also makes it taste better by like just pumping the brakes a little bit <laughs> <laughs> um for me life is my energy drink life is my Shut coffee up. i <laughs> my alarm goes off i immediately turn it off don't snooze it it's off i'm up i'm in the shower i'm good to go i not even joking that's how i work <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny realization when uh, ryan and i were roommates in college oh my, uh and then, yeah, Blair and learning, our, for... learning our different uh, alarm routines of where I'm definitely a snoozer. And neither of you had any clue that the other type of person could possibly exist, I imagine. Right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it, we spent two years in the dormitory, and then we spent a further two and a half years in like an on campus apartment kind of building. And the two years in the dormitory were the worst because we're just sharing one room. And my. Like I said, I have my very easy routine. My alarm goes off. I turn it up. I'm up. I'm at him. I'm good to go. Lyric's alarm goes off, and if he hears it, if he hears it, <laughs> it mm. he turns it off at, or he snoozes it, and then I'm going to be hearing it again later. Uh, and then there's also the times where it's just going off for minutes and minutes and minutes on end and i have to like <laughs> yell and wake up flair to turn off his goddamn alarm there i love was my a, sleep what can there, i say there was a little while where we were working with the theory i think one of our laptops was set up to be our alarm and i think we had uh the theme for cowboy bebop the main theme for cowboy bebop <laughs> would nice. go off and the theory was flair would have to because we had lofted beds, so Flaric would have to mm -hmm. get up out of bed and turn off the uh, song in order to get up. But I don't, I don't think that lasted for more than a week as an effective solution. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. So it was Tank. You have Tank going off. An oh yeah, anime that he doesn't like. <laughs> right, that's what I'm thinking. Like you had a great theme song yeah. going. If you just put my favorite song on in the morning, of course I'm going to stay in bed. <laughs> right, like oh yeah, this is good. <laughs> hmm weirdo yeah <laughs> I, I mean it's question. obvious it's obvious that ryan is the outlier <laughs> yeah i know that All makes right, sense. Next. raspberry that makes... 1440 kb gets it loud saxophone yeah. that makes sense <laughs> i would not trade in my years uh my four and a half years of college and living with flaric for anything <laughs> loved it same to you buddy yeah <laughs> Going through uh, that ordeal made Ryan the man he is today. Yeah. As, <laughs> as that explains I am so much. <laughs> very on record of saying Flaric is the best of us. Like Yes. <laughs> that is true. Um, Someday I'll learn what that means, but sure. No, that's Flaric, the part of the discovery. Phase. It, it whenever, means I adore you. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> whenever we hit like the real the real climax of the movie that is our life. You will you will disappear afterwards, and we'll realize that you were you were just our conscience all along. You know, <laughs> like you'll you'll just oh, the, the wise old person just giving advice from the sideline. Yes, it's and like, then we hmm, look back, and truly. it's like, was he ever really there? 
or was he just <laughs> was he just uh, you know uh, ourselves telling us what we really needed to hear? Yeah, that's why I have only the, the bottles of Propel. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> except for there'll be bottles of Propel. The and bottles of everywhere. Propel that we find mysteriously. He was here. <laughs> that's why. That's why I have my alarm clock going, so I know I exist. <laughs> <laughs> Got to use it a few tethered. times to be certain. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, Jake, you pick the next question. Um, our training partner Brandon says, "What is our take on Takara Fuji being the next Hakuho?" Yeah, so he he asked this question this morning, and so yeah, oh that's right, we did talk about it a little bit, but regardless, um, yeah, first take, I think we're probably all on the same page. That'd be pretty sick. Too soon to say. Yes, um, I think that's that's the I mean general thought, but like he is clear, <laughs> like obviously we've covered that this is the best debut ever. I snooze there for <laughs> It's like just. <laughs> Like that is yes. You that guys is all flaring. chuckling at the same time. I'm like, mm, I should check the chat. Uh, yep. <laughs> but no, there, there's a like we like we mentioned on the show. There's like a hundred reasons that this is the greatest debut of all time. But there have been other like pretty good debuts that are like not far behind this one. Um, like Ichi Nojo was one that came up. Uh, Ichi Nojo had a killer first Basho. Uh, and then... Number of wins match Takedu Fuji. It just so happened Ichi Nojo is fighting at the same time as Hakuho. Right, and mm. so that lose did not. If you don't, if yeah. you're not aware. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, regardless, um, it's unprecedented. But it, it's unprecedented in the sense that it's better than all the other ones, not in the sense that like it's a completely new thing that he's done. Um, so I don't necessarily have any reason to think right now that he's a guarantee or a lock to be you know, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, but I'd say his odds are as high as anybody's for sure. Um, being that uh, this was his first time in the top division, the guys that he was facing, pretty much all of them had never fought him before. Um, maybe somebody else coming up from jury. It doesn't matter. Uh, pretty much everybody he fought, he had not fought before. Um, and that's something that we do, we do sometimes see when newcomers come up that uh, guys that aren't familiar with them uh, – they they might get wins that they won't necessarily get in the future. So, like, Ishiura got, like, 10-5 and five in his debut in the top division uh, and got a fighting spirit prize for it. A lot of those wins were tricky things against guys that didn't know him very well. Um, Takeru Fuji, not a lot of tricks. Pretty much just straightforward, super hard-nosed sumo. Awesome, awesome style to have to be a contender. But I'd be interested to see when he gets to his third, fourth, fifth match with other guys, Will is there something that they can figure out about him? Is it uh, like Hoshoryu was able to kind of like matador him a little to the side and allow Takeru Fuji to push himself out with his momentum? Yeah. I wonder if that's something that he's going to be more susceptible to when people kind of get a feel for him. Um, it's a It's a good question. It's absolutely worth asking. But I do think that it's going to be worth asking again six months to a year from now, you know, we'll, we'll have a much better prediction of where he can go. Um, once his ankle is healed and mm. once, uh, once we see him go up against guys multiple times. Yeah. Uh, so our patron two times and uh, here's the issue. Um, a lot of times the discord names are different than the patron names. Um, but <laughs> in our discord two times, he basically echoed my exact sentiments, which are the same thing as Jake's. It's just too soon. Uh, but he also pointed out like Hakuho had already won like 10 you show at Takeru Fuji's age. Oh, yeah. I think that's, that's something that we're not bringing up enough in the Takeru Fuji discussion. Dude is going to be 25 before the May Basho starts. And by the time Hakuho had finished up his final Basho as a 24-year-old. He had 12 Yusho and 11 June Yusho, and it was obviously already <laughs> Yokozuna. So it's already too late for Takedu Fuji to be the next Hakuho. He yeah. is already two to three years behind at this point. And honestly, we need to stop looking for the next Hakuho because we're you're not going to get another Hakuho yeah. unless another Hakuho appears. We need yeah. to start looking for the next like. I don't know. Akebono. Akebono. Terano, that's, that's, Terano Akebono. Fuji. Terano Fuji. Fuji. Who's the next yeah. guy that's going to come around and win 10 you show in their career? Not the next yeah. guy that's going to come around and win 50. Um, I, I totally agree there. And I like I, I think in our lifetime, I don't think we will see Hakuho's records beaten. But 
there might be like a fifth face on Mount Rushmore kind of a situation where somebody else is like, you know, we'll, we'll probably see another Takano Hana level guy in our lifetime, somebody that reaches mm. 20-ish you show. But yeah, you can you can definitely say Takeru Fuji is somebody we got our eye on for being the next top guy, but not the next Hakuho because that's just like, that's like getting home from winning the lottery and being like, I'm going to invest in lottery tickets with this. You know, like it's <laughs> <laughs> something lightning, lightning striking twice kind of a situation. Like Do you I, only know lottery metaphors? It's, it has worked out organically <laughs> two times, okay? It's only two times that that's come up today, but they've both been organic. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Anybody else have other, uh, further thoughts on that, on like how – you know, the lottery works into this or <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no. I, um, I will just say that. Yeah, definitely too close too soon to call, but he's on the right track. Mm. Uh, we, we do have a couple of comments from people listening in. Stephen Ward is saying with Takeru Fuji, it's the Enho, Enho syndrome. He does well because he's different, but once he gets f- figured out, so we'll see there. Dot, and dot, then, dot. And then <laughs> Raspberry said, I think the Hoshoryu defeat will get him working a lot more on his lower body. Uh, so we got kind of two differing thoughts on the matter. Um, for me, I, I tend to think with his immediate success, I would assume that he's going to be somebody that – and he has the body that – Enho was cursed with little boy body. Uh, yeah. Like he, he didn't have any other options, and once – his thing was figured out. There He's was like nothing a completely else. Completely normal sized person. <laughs> but su- sumo little boy, sumo little compared boy. To, con- to, compared to the other wrestlers. <laughs> once he's figured out, there's nothing else Enho can do except grow six inches and put on a hundred pounds. Right. Yeah. Takedo Fuji, he's already got the body. He's like fifty percent traps, and so he <laughs> he can work with his body to figure out other things that will work. He's not limited to just push ahead straight forward he'll be able to adjust and figure out and he's in a great stable to do that with mm. yokozuna tera no fuji former yokozuna uh isagahama oyakata former yokozuna hakuho i'll be i'm oh, very yeah. interested oh, that has that is official uh miyagino Beya will be absorbed into isagahama stable they will be treated as if they're isagahama uh, the joining members of like Haku Oho won't be able to fight Atami Fuji, Takeru Fuji it's when they're both at the team. same level. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm curious on if it is going to be like one big happy family or if it's going to kind of be like two different sides and like Haku Ho's like, Hey, don't yeah. talk to my guys. I don't talk to your guys and stuff like that. I don't know. Either Time way. Will tell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rocket strapped to his back heading to the moon but like he's not he's <laughs> certainly not there yet all right let's do uh let's do one more from rod lunsford hopefully he's still sticking around he just sent us a message saying we're killed we've killed it on this show thanks for doing this uh but rod did ask us who is your favorite patron uh <laughs> oh hey no wait no <laughs> That's a very easy political answer, Mac. You're all our favorite. But he also oh. asked. <laughs> you say, well, two of our wives are listening. <laughs> yes, I was about to say, hold oh, right, on. Yeah, my wife is a paying patron, so I, yes, my wife is my favorite patron. <laughs> um, but he has also asked, are Who's you our surprised? favorite patron that nobody on this show is married to? <laughs> You're all my favorite patrons that I'm not married to. <laughs> Uh, but he also asked, are you surprised at the success and reach of the Grand Sumo Breakdown podcast? Did you know that when you started a sumo podcast, there would be people interested in it? Resounding uh, no. <laughs> no, we're not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> that was the knew joke. <laughs> we absolutely knew it. We yep. crushed it from the beginning. We identified a niche. Uh, like Ryan was saying, uh, we were we were all talking about like, oh, man, I wish there was a sumo podcast. And we're like. That's where the money is. Hey. We could be that super <laughs> podcast. Oh, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we were surprised when like anybody listened at the beginning because like I think the only place that we really started marketing it or like making you you can't just like put a thing on Spotify and like assume people will find it and listen to it, yeah. right? I think um, we started mostly like on Twitter, just like Twitter and maybe. Reddit were the were the mm-hmm. places we were posting a lot. 
Tachi Ai blog was huge. That's yes. true. Because Tachi Ai yes. was an established place that people go to for sumo news. We reached out to them, let them know, hey, we're starting a sumo podcast. And immediately, bef- I think, bef- like our very first episode, they had put a link to our podcast. And to this day, you can go to Tachi Ai blog and there's a link to our website on there. So Tachi Tachi Ai kind of advertising us when we started was very big, too, I think. Getting that small foothold that we had at the very beginning when yeah. I will not listen to those original episodes. I Cringe. Don't, I don't Cringe. think I could. Yeah. <laughs> no, real bad. But yeah, no, but yeah. it was it it's been a lot of fun to um to to meet and talk to people that uh also had that same question of like I I wish there was a sumo podcast I could listen to that have come across us. And I've really enjoyed how much we've been uh, accepted into the different groups of like sumo fans out there, and mm. we we love getting feedback from people on ways we can improve the show and ways that, uh, um, I, and and ways that we can contribute back to you know the the people that are supporting us. Just it's just been a really wild ride, and uh, it's it's yeah it's been a lot of fun. It's something I did not expect to be so passionate about when we kind of just started on a whim. Yeah, we've we've been interviewed by the Wall Street Journal. At oh one yeah, point in time. yes. <laughs> uh, we've talked to we're we're featured in a Japan Times article. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of little bit of breaking news. I don't think it's a big deal if I share it here. Uh, yeah, go for it. This past week, uh, Mac, Jake, and I talked with the BBC, the British Broadcasting Company. We're going to be featured in an upcoming podcast of theirs that has a huge audience. Um, so yeah. what, uh... just like kind of getting those kind of people reaching out to us, like we are, I'm going to say friendly and then add in, in, in like Ryan's, uh, character for the podcast, uh, John Gunning, I hate him, but we're friendly <laughs> with like John Gunning, who is uh, the, one of the top English we commentators on, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but, says, we live. <laughs> but we're we're friendly with like one of the top English commentators for sumo wrestling. Like how how did that happen? To, to be fair, if you want to get to know John Gunning, just like text him sometime. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's he is super cool about uh, about talking to people and sharing stuff. And uh, yeah, anyways, his home phone number. Let me grab that for you, real. <laughs> yep, uh, social security, uh, biometric scans. <laughs> quick, quick on pre- correction: British Broadcasting Corporation. Not British Broadcasting Company. Thank you, Raspberry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it didn't sound right, but I didn't know enough to correct you. <laughs> it's not the other BBC. But still, That's all I know. The, the, the gentleman that we spoke with, fantastic. Really enjoyed speaking with him. It was a great opportunity. And so like, we're, we're just happy to talk sumo with people that want to talk sumo. Yeah. Yep, exactly. I, and honestly, I think that's the biggest thing that, like, coming, like, having a way to connect with other people that are interested and passionate about just watching sumo and being sumo fans, then the evolution of, uh, of us finding out about the vibrant amateur sumo community, it was like another like weird niche to step into. Um, and now we're doing sumo a little bit, at least three of us are Mac. Um, two and a half, <laughs> two and a half, two and a half, okay. two and a half. There Me, you go. Two Florida, and a half. half of Ryan and yep. Mac is, <laughs> Mac is terrified of Brandon still. So, um, <laughs> terrified of other things. <laughs> yes. Mac will fall apart the second That's he's in the, a real thank sumo. You, Ryan. Mac. That's the issue. Is we all I know tr- this. I try, and then my shoulder gets dislocated again. Or You're just worried just... that Brandon is going to fold your mawashi with you still in it. <laughs> and that's just the thing. I only have so much vitality left in me. I've, I've got too many broken bones. <laughs> we are taking his blood, too. That's exactly. True. Yeah. Not my blood. What do you want from me? Yep. Gallons of it. <laughs> All right, what else we got? <laughs> uh, let's let's cover one more that has popped up in chat from Stephen Ward. Um, how bad is the NHK crackdown on sumo streams? Uh, also, with the drama of the JSA pretty much trying to destroy Miyagino Oyakata. Okay, I didn't realize how separate those questions were going. Yeah, to be. Yeah, was like, hold on, uh, there were there were two thoughts there. Why don't we uh, Why don't we save the the Miyagino stuff for the for the main episode because that's going to be one of the big stories. That'll pick oh, yeah. up one a of decent amount of time. And yeah, yeah, we're that's still developing enough. But yeah, in short, it's, um, it's, it's I, tough. real quick, real quick. I would say I don't think the JSA is trying to destroy Miyagino Oyakata. As I laid out on the episode where we broke down everything that happened with that, 
I think he's lucky to still be in the JSA. And if they wanted to kick him out, they had him sign the paper when he became an Oyakata saying, if you're a bad mm-hmm. boy, we could kick you out. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they didn't kick him out. If they wanted to, he'd be gone. He'd be gone. Um, yeah. So that's my quick opinion on the Miyagino Oyakata. Like he punishment was equal to the crime. And I don't yeah. think there's a big conspiracy. Before we talk about streams real quick, we are not going to talk about individual streams because we do not want anybody getting in trouble. Um, but yes, right now the the streaming community is, as far as I can remember, this is about as bad as it's ever been to for people trying to stream uh, sumo and getting cracked down on it. Um, yeah, it's so hard as a as a foreign fan, especially an English language foreign fan, to uh, to find sumo to watch, and it's 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 such a bummer that uh, it's such a bummer that the NHK is it the NHK or the JSA who's on the crusade? NHK right now? is it NHK. more it's more NHK. the TV channel yeah. than it is the sumo um, the sumo association themselves. But they kind they're kind of hand in hand. They're not doing stuff that the other person doesn't approve of, right? They're get, they're working together, but. Yeah, it's about as bad as it's ever been right now, and it, it sucks because it's free marketing. You know, like the the they're either gonna make zero dollars off of us by not being sumo fans, or they're going to help foster a passion for sumo to get people to travel across the world to go see it live, uh, or people buy in merch. Which is a know? ton of fun, by the way. If you have the opportunity to go to a tournament yeah. live. Do it! It is so much fun. I would like. You might run to... into a former Yokozuna just walking the yeah. halls early oh in the morning. God. Oh yeah! <laughs> All right, the third time that winning the lottery has come up organically. <laughs> 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 we did win the lottery by seeing him just kind of wandering about, and we went and asked for his picture. Yeah. We we also saw, saw uh, Naruto Oyakata, and then we all agreed <laughs> like. Uh, he doesn't look super approachable. Let's not try on this one. Let's not immediately when Kisuke Sato started getting yes. pictures taken. <laughs> yeah. He's um, like, oh, these guys are going to want pictures. Yeah. I better dip. I better, but, I better duck. <laughs> to get back on topic, though, the, um, I, I, uh, I'm going to pull a flaric here and bring up esports. Uh, but League of Legends, whether or not you, in, you want to watch it or enjoy playing the game or whatever, their marketing strategy is like, let's just put it all free on YouTube. That's fine. Just put it on YouTube. Well, that's... They they don't make their money that way because they get people sucked into enjoying the game and playing the game themselves, and that's their money maker. That's where they actually make their profit. Putting it on YouTube, putting these like high high um, production value tournaments for free, is just to foster the community and foster the the passion for it. And I don't know why Sumo doesn't do the same. Just let people stream it. Put out like the the main product for for free, or at the very least, quit cracking down uh immediately on on people who are trying to spread the word uh i'm not saying they should give everything away for free by any means but like the current model of just being only o- only bad guys about it i feel like is just not a good move in the long term um yeah but yeah, and, and it sucks overall. because the the legal options uh for us watching yeah. are wait a full day and be behind all the conversation by a day uh, to watch the NHK recaps or the, is it an, is it the JSA app that, or is it an, there's NHK a, there's app? a sumo app. There's a grand well, sumo the, app. You can get is the app through the TV channel or through the sumo association. Uh, hang on. Let me look. But, but yeah, the app is out there, but the app gives away the result before you can watch the video. So like, yeah. that's a complete non-starter for people that are fans. Um, yeah. And, and, and for me, I feel like, kind of have a small responsibility to be at since we kind of have this position um uh as people get information about sumo from us i feel like i i need to be completely up to date i feel like i can't be a day behind the conversation yeah um otherwise i'm behind and then i'm not going to know what i'm talking about on the podcast yeah especially like our midway like we have to like if we're going to release something between two days we kind of like we always try and hurry that one out in the morning so like it's out there you know it's yeah Current. And we've been trying to do the same recently with our recap episodes. Yeah. Just try to get it ish, initial reactions and out right away so people can have that to take in. And so yeah. we, we couldn't do that if we were just relying on the NHK highlight package. What? Japanese Sumo Kyokai official app. Got it. Okay, it so is. that's from the JSA. Yes. Yeah, and I think one of the other huge factors for me in – uh, in being current on sumo is that we're we're all around the world we're all in different time zones here right 
Um, you don't know who was able to find a video for today by the time that you want to talk about sumo. So like in our discord, like we've, this last Basha was the first one where I was able to, uh, I, I was just incredibly busy in January, but in March here, I was able to like watch videos in the morning because I, I knew where to find them. Again, I'm not going to like say it out loud on here. We don't want to narc get anybody in trouble, but like I was able to find videos early enough in the morning that I could just hop into the discord and chat during the Basha with other people that were also current on it. And that is like mm -hmm. the most fun part of being a sumo fan is yeah. hanging out and talking about stuff while it's happening. Yeah. It's great talking yeah. between the Bashas, but like if if you got to worry about spoilers and stuff during during the tournament, it's such a pain if you can't just watch the video that day and then move on and talk to people. Yeah. Like Jake, as you mentioned, between days fourteen and fifteen, like a lot of the fun was that speculation: what's going to happen with Takeru Fuji? Like a lot of the fun of following a sport is the discourse that you have as it's happening live, mm. yep. and. It's really difficult for us, first off, because it's happening live from like 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. Yeah, literally and the obviously worst possible that's, time zone. <laughs> that's not something we can watch live, but the best I can do is watch it like four hours later in the morning and then catch up with the conversation and yeah. then take part. Uh, so, yeah, it, it'd be really nice if there was something a little bit better uh, or a lot better, but I'll take a little bit better. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's so close because they they almost give us exactly what we want, which is the the highlights. They do the the thirty minute recap of all the matches. Yeah, it's just that they're actually just put like a full production team behind it because they mm -hmm. get like commentators. They cut it up and like they air it. They air it on their like little NHK World app, and I'm sure on their uh, probably TV uh, TV channel too. I imagine at some capacity. It's just unfortunately, it's just like you say, it takes a day. Or sometimes it's multiple days behind. I have checked the YouTube channel at least yeah. a couple times, and it's like, oh, we're missing like two or three days at a time. But I, so. I also like hearing, I, I like hearing Ross, I like hearing Hero, I like hearing Raj and Murray. It's like they, they give great insight. It's just, it's a shame it's so delayed. Yep. Yeah, yeah I haven't not, watched. That's, I'm not willing to sacrifice yeah. being behind. You know, I'm, uh, that's and that's yeah. that's just it. Yep. Yeah, I, it's unfortunate. It would be great if they just kind of, they kind of went to another more low low kind of effort thing or maybe just like have a couple subtitles uh mm -hmm. as we just throw up a couple stats on the on the thing would be would be fantastic but even if it was just one day behind i would be fantastic but when you get multiple days behind it just gets yeah. really really rough and then like you say with the app with the spoilers and i think yeah. they offered they that's recently a non starter for me the yeah, spoilers. I, yeah i would agree as well like that's for sports it's just something that's just not that's not uh, acceptable in my opinion Yep. And they're trying. It seems like they unbundled the like the sumo broadcast, so you can actually, as a foreign fan, able to pay for a subscription to get that. But it sounds like maybe that is you can't. You have to watch it live still. Like, I think, yeah, yeah, you still have to watch it live. There, there's Once no again, perfect so option, close. Yeah. And and yeah, we've got more options. They're getting. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. We we got more legal options than we used to, but they're all still bad. Yeah, yeah, and they're... the option to watch like the live broadcast that also kind of doesn't work for me. I don't have two hours to sit through and rewatch a uh, replay of the live broadcast. Like I've got my job. I've got my family. I don't have two hours straight for 15 days yeah. to be able to sit down and rewatch everything like that. That compact highlight package is really perfect for what I need. Yeah. And, and if it was an on demand, like if it was in the YouTube format or something, the two hour video wouldn't be the end of the world. You can fast yeah. forward, skip around. If it's all on demand, that would be okay. But I don't know. They, yeah, like I said, there's just no good options, and it sucks that they're cracking down so hard uh, because yep. it's hurting a community that is extraordinarily passionate and willing to jump through all sorts of hoops to watch their sumo. Like, harness that in a different way than making it impossible to watch it. Yep. Yeah. They're getting so close. Uh, I, I will look at see what we're gravitating to and consuming. And if they put out a product similar to that, I think they would see a lot of response. Yeah, like if you pay like a subscription for a highlight package, that's kind of really, uh, it comes out like like in the morning quick or maybe even by noon that day. I would I would definitely throw down some money for that. Just monetize yeah, a just... YouTube channel, right? Like why yeah. don't they just do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, who knows? I, I feel like they're trying to sell broadcast rights to someone i don't think that's gonna happen in the west it's yeah. i don't know i wish it would 
we get enough I, patrons, we will purchase the broadcast rights. Yes. <laughs> Grand sumo. But we, we only need two several orders left. of magnitude more of you. <laughs> yes. We got two left. We can power through this. Yep. We have we have promised Flarick a hard out at 3 p.m. Once again, otherwise oh, shit, we might yeah. lose him from the podcast. We might forever, lose him for so. good. <laughs> All right, but what yes. do we got? So first from Foxfire, uh, the day one results of the Haru Basho gave him a good idea for a question because all of the Rikshi from Mongolia lost on day one of the Basho. And he said, it didn't sound like a simple sumo DB query. So when was the last time every Mongolian wrestler lost their match in a single day in Maku Uchi? Uh, and so it is a little bit easier to uh, sumo DB query than you might think. Uh, what I did to find the answer for this um, go to the bout query page, and then the big thing you could do, obviously, sort by you just want results from Makuuchi, but you can um, search for people by their shushin, which I don't know exactly what that translates uh, to, but it's where they're from. Yeah. And so it breaks down uh, Japan by all the prefectures, but then it also has all of the other countries. And so you can just select, okay, I want to see the results of everybody from Mongolia do a search on that, and then I just looked for the last time that all of the dots were black on one day for all of those Rikshi, <laughs> which turns out was day six of November. Uh, Tamawashi, oh, wow. Tamawashi, Kirishima, like Hoshoryu. <laughs> yeah, they were the only active Rikshi from Mongolia in the top division. Um, Teru no Fuji was Kyujo at this time, uh, and they all lost to Chudanoumi, Gonoyama, and Takeyasu, respectively. Wow. And well, our last I thought that was going to be a really hard one. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a little bit easier. Cool. Sumo D yeah, Ryan Ryan is like probably one of the world's leading experts in sumo DB querying at this point, <laughs> uh, just from all the stuff that he does for the Bonske. I I'm getting better at it. I I definitely know there's people a lot better than me, but I am I am getting better at it. Um and then our final question was one that came up earlier in the live stream from Mosho Gairu. Uh, thoughts on Asakoryu in Juryo and a bonus question. Will Wakataka Kage make it back to Seki Wake? Uh, so has anybody else seen Asakoryu in Juryo besides me? I have not. Nope. <laughs> uh, so as, as I mentioned on the Midway episode when he was and everybody <laughs> watching live can see my cats have decided to join me. Um, but wow, Asakoryu, Renly just wants love. Give him forward. love. <laughs> Oh yeah, Renly is does not hide it. He's just like you give me love and you give me love now. Uh there is no way you're getting around this. Uh Teddy's just hanging about on my printer right now for some reason. Um so yes, <laughs> Asakoryu, he he's like uh Midori Fuji, he's like Enho. He's a smaller guy, but he's also like Ishiura cuz he's very buff. He's uh, yeah, he's a lot buffer than Enho. And uh, I mean Midori Fuji's pretty ripped as well, but yeah, I I'd say Ishiura hmm. is the best analog. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on Asakoryu. I think he'll probably make it up into the top division at some point. I don't think he's going to be... If he can be as successful as Midori Fuji, I think that would surprise me. Uh, and bonus question, will Wakataka Kage make it back to Seki Wake? Ooh, I don't... Probably. I hope. That's tough. I hope so, but I hope. He's, <laughs> he's 30 years old. He's coming off of a serious knee injury. Um, he's coming off going just nine and six at the bottom of Jurio. So hopefully he's still getting strength back in that knee. But I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a tad bit concerned with Wakataka Kage's performance in the second week of this last Ba show. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I think there's probably some element that this was his first tournament back at uh, 15 matches. Mm -hmm. um in quite a while so i i guess i'm not surprised that he stumbled a little bit um kind of same for hakuoho like i'm i'm not one tournament back in jurio that's not completely stellar but is still a winning record i don't know i i'm not uh I, i'm not throwing in the towel on him yet but it, it's a little worrying but less i think i'm i think i'm less worried than you are um going from seven to 15 matches is a big deal. Uh, going up against a much higher level of competition in Jurio than in Makushta is a big deal. Yeah. I'm not throwing in the towel. I think, I think he'll be okay. 
Yeah, I think I'm hopeful. It depends a lot on how that uh, knee injury affects him. He obviously has the talent. He got there once. He was mm-hmm. knocking on the door of Ozeki for quite some time. Yep. Uh, but I don't think 30 is an age where he's out of the running at all. He's probably yeah. If he can uh, get his knee figured out, I think he's definitely ha- can make a run for it. And even it, though it, I don't rate the guy, but I think he has potential. And <laughs> it is just Sekiwake. I mean, Abby's going to be Sekiwake next Basha. So how big of an accomplishment is it really? Um... <laughs> Shodai was Sekiwake. Yeah, Shodai was Sekiwake. Oh, Shodai was Sekiwake. Yeah. Shodai was Anybody so who's been Sekiwake is a scrub. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, everyone it's not like... who has been higher than Sekiwake has been Sekiwake before, <laughs> kind of by definition. <laughs> I don't think he is going to be Ozeki, maybe ever. Uh, I think that injury might have taken that window away from him. I still think it's shocking. I watched the NHK official preview uh, for like they did a 2024 like preview, and they had everybody guessing who was going to be Ozeki. I can't remember if it was Gunning, but it might have been Gunning who had Wakataka Kage as Ozeki by the end of 2024. Mm. And, like, that alone... Typical like, Gunning. <laughs> I can't remember if it was him, <laughs> if it was Murray, or if it was Hiro. But one of them had Wakataka Kage as Ozeki. And I was like, what the hell are you doing? Like, he doesn't have it. I don't know that he has enough time to make it to Ozeki. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He we'll was see. just so, so good before he got injured that, like, I, I need to see much larger sample size of him doing poorly before I stop believing. Yeah. And he, I mean, still nine and six. It's just kind of the Ooh. injurio caveat to that. We have a new question in the chat. Uh-oh. What this, Lord of the this Rings character? Be, this will have to be our last one. Uh, oh. This'll, yeah, this will have to be uh, our last I'm one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jake. Katie is not a paying patron. We don't have to answer this. Oh. How did she get this link? <laughs> is she still a paying patron? Oh, shoot. She is. She is. If she got it. <laughs> She's been paying with putting up with you doing podcasts. <laughs> she has times. been paying a greater cost than anyone. But yes, mm-hmm. uh, for oh. for our final question, yes, she says, "Which Lord of the Rings character are each of you?" Um, I think it's we've had this conversation in the past. I know as yes. just friends <laughs> as a friends group, and if I recall, Ryan and Flarek were Merry and Pippin, yes. interchangeably. Yes. No, not interchangeably. Flarek's the Pippin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they come in pints. Yeah. <laughs> At Mac, I think you, uh, I, if I recall, I think you ended up being uh, either Aragorn or Boromir. I was Aragorn. Yeah, that, that tracks. I don't know if I would follow you into battle, but like I could see, I could see people doing it, right? Nah. <laughs> and I, if I remember right, then uh, we just devolved into I'm short, so I'm Gimli, and there wasn't really. You, I think yeah. it was it was between you or David that got Gimli. I couldn't remember which. Yeah. I mean, no, I know it was me, but, like, I don't think there was any reason behind haha ha Jake Short, um, which is about the <laughs> level of humor that you guys normally elevate to. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't I... think it's a bad answer either. I just think that there's better reasons for it that I could be the Gimli. <laughs> I, I did double check. Your wife is – she once was but is no longer a paying patron. Oh, uh, so I refuse to go dive any deeper into this question. As whatever, to the why, whatever you say, Mary <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but um, quick one from Olivan. This will be a fast one. Will we get more of these in the future? Possibly at the next 100 patrons. Uh, I I think I yeah I'm absolutely fine doing another one of these. Like this, no, this we're never going to reach 200. Patrons. Yeah, I like this. I don't yeah. think we, we need to wait for a. I don't think we need to wait for a milestone. If we just yeah. need another bonus episode, I think that this was a format that we could do in the future. Right, uh, Flarek. Right, Flarek. I don't know. I had to do so much work. I had to like <laughs> read off questions, find the outline. I had to be mildly startled by knowing that there's an outline for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Look at the chat. <laughs> oh shut up, Trent. <laughs> Trent is barely even taller than me. <laughs> I'm like five six, five seven if I'm being generous, but like I, I'm short, but I'm not like 
It's not like my prime attribute or something like that. <laughs> I don't like define my life and relationships by like being short. So like, I don't think it's, I don't know. I, 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 I get it. It's a funny way to tease me, but like, I feel like you guys can do better. <laughs> when was the last time we teased you for being short? I don't know. I, I think since we stopped recording in person as often, it's kind of died off. <laughs> I was like, when did this, when did this happen? Yeah, we, we we haven't seen Jake in person since 2020. So, At least, oh yeah, that's yeah. Uh, no, well, I Mac think hasn't because he doesn't go to sumo practice. Will you lay off that? For <laughs> Absolutely God's sake, not. You are a broken record. All right, I think I think yes, I would absolutely love to do these again. I think for this one, for our hundred patron celebration, I like keeping it uh, close family here. Mm. I think we could open this up to. Let's see if we can more open patrons. it up to more people. <laughs> well, I mean, we opened it up to every patron, but I think open it up to everybody and see what kind of chaos we get with that. Ooh, um, it could be ooh. fun and, and ridiculous, yeah. But with Ryan? that being said, it is yes. 3 o'clock. Thank you, everybody, for participating <laughs> and chatting. We greatly appreciate you sitting with us for two hours or whatever portion you were able to. And above everything else, Thank you all so much, except for Katie. I'm still not seeing your information as an active patron. <laughs> oh, God. Um, for supporting the Ryan, podcast for as long as you have. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.